Hey, Katie, what's your favorite sitcom from when you were a kid? Favorite sitcom? Step by step. Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered what I've became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Oh, okay. Cincinnati. WKRP. I would. I mean, I know what you're getting at. But. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking. Town to town, up and down the dial. All I know is... Maybe you and me were never meant to be. But maybe, think of me once in a while. I'm on... What is it? Oh, I'm on the dial at... WKRP in Cincinnati. Did you ever watch that? No. Do you know what I'm? You don't even know it. You're just looking at me like a. I mean, so you it had sounds, dinosaurs. It, sound, it sounds very familiar, but I wonder if that's the Littlest Hobo where they got their song. It sounds very similar. It's because I sang both tomorrow. of them. Maybe Possibly. It's interpretive singing of uh, television theme shows. Mm. I did a horrible job of WKRP right there. I feel like I could redeem myself if I had to, <clears> but I don't want to waste your practice, time. I don't wanna... And you have to come back. It sounded better in the shower. It, for some reason, I woke up and that song was stuck in my head. Our new shower does have quite the like echo. Acoustics? I wouldn't call it acoustics. I call it echo, which is very different. Well, the other day I was down there scrubbing my feet, you know, like uh, with that pumice stone mm -hmm, that we have. Mm -hmm. Mr. S what, what's it called? Mr. Scrubby? Something like that. Yep. And I was, I discovered the acoustic properties of our shower because you as you get a little lower in the shower, no, just my, my voice it sounded so much better. Oh, you were singing or something? Or why were you talking to yourself like scrubbing your feet? I was muttering to myself. <laughs> I'll get those people. <laughs> my precious. Is, is, is. Oh my God. I think I've told you guys on here, but if not, there's this TikTok I shared it with my mom. This dog like barks out of control, which my mom's dog barks out of control. And she can't figure out what to do. They've like squirted her with, they've told her no since she was a puppy, squirted her with water, which is how we trained all our dogs. They, they don't like getting squirted for some Did that reason. dog go to obedience school? No, my mom just trained her, but maybe she should have. I don't know. But my mom also had all the time on her hands because Nick and I had moved out, you know. Yeah. She was her first grandbaby, Charlotte. But anyway, right. so my mom trained her and she, I don't remember her barking at the old house, but she barks at my mom's new house like fucking nuts. I think because she, she's trying to earn her keep. So she, she wants dogs you to are think. Dogs like that though. They're like. Protecting their, yeah. their turf. So anyway. She does a good job of protecting against squirrels, stray dogs. Mailmen. Anyone um, who comes near friends, that property. Any, us. If and we, if we walk out to get the mail and walk back in the house, she barks again. But anyway, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is there was this woman on TikTok who had the same problem. Her dog would bark at everything. And she got what's called, what was actually a Halloween costume. And this is when she learned that it stops her dog from barking. He won't bark when he has this, when he had the Halloween costume on like that one day no barking even though kids were showing up at the house to get candy she was like huh? so she calls it quiet ears because he was supposed to look like an ewok so he had like a little thing that made a little furry ear thing anyway so she puts the quiet ears on him and he starts by muttering to himself where he goes it's kind of like me wearing headphones that's when you said muttering to myself it made me think of that and then no barking and so i told my mom i was like You've got to get like a thick headband or something, you know, like one from the 80s that people think is cool now, like it's new again, whatever, and put that over the dog's ears. And then maybe Charlotte won't bark. I don't know if my mom has tried it, but mom, if you're listening, try it, report back. Please tell us. Send us in a speak pipe. I don't know if she would do that, but maybe she would. <laughs> Live from Carrie's uh, dog been, training school. I've tried to get her to come on the channel for years and she is, is a hard stop. No. Yeah. It's fair. She likes her anonymity. Yes. Also, we'll she post just, her photo right here. She'll mur she'll do murder. <laughs> she does not. Mm -mm. I won't let that happen because okay, I, I, I love you just that much. All right, this I is a, let the wrath a of drawing my of, of <laughs> a uh, rough what? sketch of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your mom. That's the Unabomber. Actually, there's Hoodie, one of glasses. There's one photo of us we can share because I asked her about it. We took a funny photo of us with headbands on. With they were like Christmas headbands. They were right. so ridiculous. If they hadn't been so expensive, because we were in Santa Monica, they were like forty dollars. We would have bought them if they were like ten. But anyway, I was like, "Can I post this?" She's like, "Yeah." So got I'll permission. Let you, I'll let you post that photo. Excellent. Anyway, but the quiet ears cracks me up. The muttering to when dogs mutter to themselves. Never <laughs> seen a dog mutter to itself. Me neither. I'll I'll link. I'll give Sean the link to that tiktok because i saved it cool i save a lot of animal talks oh mm -hmm. i have something that i came across and i thought it was pretty funny okay. i follow uh some comedy accounts here and there on mm -hmm. the internet on um, the interwebs interwebs one of them is moist buddha have you have you followed that, that sounds one? disgusting i don't even like that word moist 
Why? Duncan Hines is moist. That's a cake. Yeah. Is it disgusting because it's moist cake? I don't like the word moist, and why would I want to call myself? Like the word moist? It's gross. You like the word phlegm? That's another good one. <laughs> Ian Fleming. <laughs> That's like what's, James Bond. What's the name of the Hawk town? <laughs> There's a town outside of Austin, Flugerville. Sounds like a, a loogie. Yeah, Flug- Fl- Flugieville. <laughs> if, no offense to people who live in Flugerville. Okay. Well, anyways, um, that's not the point of okay, what I was saying. Mm-hmm. Moist Buddha. Yes. Uh, dusty dry Buddha. So mm-hmm. better, uh, better. doesn't matter. They posted something and it made me laugh out loud. And I was like, that's a good idea. But. So you know who John Mayer is, right? Of course. Yeah, he's the mayor of what? Guitarville? He's Mm -hmm. like a good guitar player. He's a very good guitar player. Okay. I'm not a fan of his music. Oh, I love his music. I just don't like when, I don't know if anybody else, this is like unpopular opinion possibly, and I'm gonna gonna share it. I hate when, like hate. I find it so frustrating when I'm at a concert and someone who plays a guitar decides to go on like a five, maybe seven minute guitar solo has nothing to do with the song. I hate it. I'd cut their strings if I could. I hate it so much. I'm like, is this over yet? What's happening? Why is this still going? When are you going to get to the next song where I can sing along? What's this shit? I can't even sing to it. You're like, yeah, you play the guitar. I already knew that. I can't. I can't. Somebody doesn't like the guitar. You just like, like the guitar as an accompanying I instrument. Like it you as, don't like it being a lead mm, instrument. I don't like it to be the only instrument. It okay. needs to be accompanied with song. Yeah. And I don't go to see a singer and then just listen to. And this is why we don't go to concerts a lot together. Like a because guitar I like or, to see a guitar solo. Or drum solos. There was like a 19 mm-hmm. minute guitar solo. Oh my at the God, GNR I would have I would have just gone to the bathroom. Awesome. I'd just go get another beer or something. That Some people actually... are virtuosos. Like you don't go to uh, see Mozart and, uh, or who, who's a piano player that, that would really rock your socks today? That's none. Okay. But like, you know, you go see a piano player, like Long Long, you know, oh, amazing. Oh, is that a piano player? Okay. Yeah, but it's just a giant piano solo. He's not even singing the whole time. It's just But one. that's what I would go for. It'd be like going to Kenny G. You'd know he's going to play the saxophone. Imagine if Kenny G came out With and he was like, hey, everybody, today I'm going to play the triangle for three hours. Oh, like, my God. Oh, but that's God, the thing. That's how I feel solo. when I go to see someone right. and they don't, and then they go into this other, and sure, it's music. And I know, as, like I said, I don't think it's a popular opinion. It's just my opinion. <laughs> And I've never actually told anybody out loud, and it feels good to get that off my chest. Because forever, you know, a lot of people will be like, yeah, oh, like the Dwight's in the audience. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, is it over? Like, what fucking time is it? How, I want to play the music. Oh my God, is this guitar solo going to be over anytime soon? I know. Maybe now's the time to go to the snack bar. That's usually when I go to the bathroom, actually. Yeah. Okay, so, well, the, besides, the, and I get it, I, I hear you. John Mayer, I think, is really good at guitar. He's very I like, talented. I like it when he freestyles. I don't particularly care for his songs. See, I like his music. Not the end of the world. Or I did. I haven't listened to his stuff in a the long time. The live stuff is amazing. Yeah. Because then he goes off the rails from his because songs, which I Because guitar solos, like. which I would never see him live for that All very right. reason. Agree to disagree yes. is the new name of the podcast. <laughs> so we agree that he's a genius. Mm-hmm. We just don't agree what he's a genius about. We just don't like the same things. Can about I his... present to you a bridge where we can both agree that he's a genius? What did, what did Dusty Buddha say? This is actually, they retweeted um, John Mayer because okay. John Mayer had a brilliant epiphany. Oh, that's awesome. He said they should let everyone on hold with customer service talk to one another. That would be interesting. It's like so, it's like the old uh, in the olden days when I worked downtown LA, we had to always monitor whether the girls were on the chat line. Right, so here's the deal. You know what the chat Man, line is? If you're, if, well, let's just. Or the party line. I was like, that's not quite right. Right, if you were waiting customer party service. Party line. You know, you're the next caller up, or you know, you have a 20 minute wait, but then you you're dropped into the the waiting room. Every introvert watching a, this is like, absolutely not. I will sit in silence. Oh, it would be hilarious. You'd be like, "Hello, yeah. this is Sean. I'm you're waiting." Like, he- hello. Sean has entered the chat. You know, and then you're like, "Hey, I'm really pissed off at my electric company. You too. You yeah, know, they're the fucking worst. Your you know, cable company is going to be there between 9 a.m. and 2023 you're like what <laughs> you just get more and more agitated as yeah you wait and everyone's getting and everyone gets worked up and it's a, a frothy mob by the time and then all of a sudden this then is, the poor customer service person but then someone commented underneath okay so john mayer mm-hmm. says they should let everyone on hold with customer service talk to one another mm-hmm. and i thought that's fucking brilliant that's hilarious you know what was even more brilliant mm-hmm. brixton 
X Brixton okay, commented underneath and said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could hear their voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People randomly just get pulled out of the group convo like the rapture when the rep finally pu <laughs> puts them on. It's like, a, oh, he's yeah. been chosen. Yeah, as he gets picked up. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. No, but there's this new trend on TikTok. Well, it's not even new, but this trend on TikTok where people use hold music, you know, where it's like, like the worst hold music source. So people have taken the ones, like, I. I can't do it justice, but you'll know the hold music when you hear it. You're like, oh, I've been on hold with that music. And someone will like dance to it. And they'll be like, when they put you on hold, but they hit you with that beat. And they're like, <laughs> it's so bad. It kills me. Everybody. That'd be a good app. We should invent that from the idea people. Mm. That's who we are, right? We call ourselves the idea people. I don't know. Maybe we do. Yeah. This is our new app. Mm. It's called The Waiting Room. No matter what waiting you're doing, you turn on the app. And then you just waste your time and like you're just hanging out. What are you hanging out for? Well, I want I'm hanging to play out Snake. Oh. Well, we could put that in the app. Mm, good. Yeah, that in the waiting me room. of my old Nokia days. And it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, what game is that? Uh, card game. Oh, um, and they shuffle. Yeah. Uh, solitaire. Solitaire. I remember in the office, Pam's like, I just like it when it goes. <laughs> Do you think when you die and go to heaven, because mm -hmm. we're all going to heaven, mm -hmm. all, is it all dogs go to heaven or all yeah. cats? Everybody. Everybody goes to heaven. All, all bodies go to heaven. Yeah. But you get up to the pearly gates mm -hmm. and uh, St. Peter says, uh, hey, we're going to take a look at your life, the film. So you sit down in the waiting room. and then Why would you have to do that? But okay. It's part of Catholicism. So you wait in the waiting room and you watch your film Sounds and St. Like Peter and you are reviewing your life. Well, who's St. Peter? He's the guy that reviews your life when you get up. That's not the point. So, okay. so you and St. Peter are reviewing the footage of your life. Okay. And then he says, I, I noticed between 1991 and 2001, you played about 300,000 hours of solitaire while you were at work. You're just picking and picking and picking and picking. There's going to be nothing left. Well, that, the people at home don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the people listening, I'm saying. Okay. So but, solitaire. So then you're going to get in trouble for playing solitaire. Well, not trouble, but they're like, what'd you do care? with your life? At least you weren't like we robbing you, people. That's true. Those people go to hell. Mm -hmm. And then you review the footage of your life in hell with also St. Peter because he has this to hold down two should, jobs. That's why I'm so surprised you didn't really like the good place. I feel like you got to give it another go. I, I will. Now that I know. It's almost like that kind of a joke. For the people listening at home, what is the good place? The good place is a show on, I don't know. If, I never know. CBS, NBC, ABC. Nobody fucking cares. But it's a show on television with Ted Danson and What's her name? Kristen Bell. And I don't want to give anything away if you haven't watched it, but it's essentially people die and they wake up in the good place, meaning heaven. And then you learn from there. Well, I was hooked when I heard Ted Danson was on it because I'm I a love big Danson. fan of his. His character is very funny. He's really good. He's a great actor. Yeah, he's Everything a great he's actor. In. But anyway, I, I hope he wins an, uh, an Oscar. Not that I want anyone to think the oscars are important because i think they're horrible but if anyone deserves a, a world class a fake award yeah you know where's your oscar katie you have one around here somewhere mm. okay uh so that was my first note with it. listen if you enjoy otdm as much as uh i think you do mm. what i need you to do right now all you gonna do contact seven friends and bring them in no how is this tell, not a pyramid scheme yeah michael tell a friend about otdm Oh, just yeah, uh, yeah. tell one person that helps a lot send an email share the video share the audio whatever Tweet you want it to out yeah. reshare it do it actually does help it does all right and uh, all serious seriousness yeah super serious um <laughs> yeah yeah you were gonna say something I was, I was gonna say no i didn't have anything to say okay well uh i have one more thing to say okay and this is about the olympics yes the humper bumper it was very popular. Right, yeah. Uh, we did have someone write in and tell us that that is called the wiggle worm maneuver. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's to make the boat go faster. So you're trying I, to I was right. ride over the wave. I said to make the boat go faster and balance it, I would assume. You hump the air to Got make the hump, boat. A hump, hump was the best Let's song. play that footage again. Hump, hump. What would be a better song? It'd be like, it, do the Humpty it, Hump. It, 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 <laughs> Watch him do the Humpty yeah, Hump. That's pretty good. Humpty dance is your chance to do the Hump. Oh, do me, baby. <laughs> that would be the funniest. Someone should create that. Shock G died this year. Oh. I know. I was really bummed. He was, he's such a musical genius. He really was. And don't, if you're at home thinking, making a joke, I'm not. He was really talented. I don't know that much about him. 
Well, he didn't have that fake nose. That was a fake nose. Oh, I know that. But how old was he even? He couldn't have been that old. Like 50 something, 60? Uh, yeah, early 50s. That's really young. The OD or something? He did actually. Uh, I, I think it was like some sort of... Wow. Katie, why are you bring me into the pit of despair? <laughs> well, when, whenever you tell me somebody's passed away who's a musician and I yeah. know that they shouldn't be that old, I'm like, they must OD, which is really sad. I'm not like making light of it by any means. But oh. when people play around with different pills and different, even prescribed or not prescribed, like then it's like how, what's his name died? Uh, Heath Ledger? No, but Prince? Yes. No, uh, the Heartbreakers. Uh, Tom Petty? Yes. A lot of people, I think, wear themselves really thin mm -hmm. and then you know if they're touring specific specifically and well, it's hard on your body you it's hard on your body physically mentally and yeah. you know the, the older anyway. you get uh, i don't know if shock g was touring when that happened but i don't think so i think he passed away oh okay. me you know what he did i think it was in a hotel room well but that's a bummer it anyway um, okay so the olympics oh right so i used to be a big fan of the olympics when i was younger the earliest olympics i can remember watching would be the 84 Los Angeles Olympics. Mm. So I would have been nine years old. Uh, I was just the ones a previous baby. to that would have been four years old. So I would have been five. I wouldn't have remembered those. That yeah. was 79. Yeah. Maybe winter. Anyways, neither here nor there. I used to love them. I've grown to kind of, eh, not be Honestly, that it's been the last like 10 years where I'm just in, like, I'm apathetic. Is it because we're too old to compete? No, I think a couple of things. Bad coverage from NBC? Yes, horrible coverage. And also, we have so much media to consume that the idea, if, I, and I'm sure they do this, but I would have to seek it out, and I frankly don't want to. I would like to be able to, before the Olympics come about, like all their promo is just schedules. Right. What do you want to watch? Do you want to watch? Because I have certain events I like to watch, like in the Winter Olympics. Like I said, I like the the where they ski and then shoot the rifle. Right. I I would take the time to figure out what the fuck that's called. It's the uneven bars and find out when it, when it's happening. And then if we were, I'd be like, oh, my thing's gonna be on. Goat stacking. How come you're so clammy? I got coffee going. I was running around you setting get things very up. Nervous. He's so clammy. Anyway, I would I would do that, you know, but. I feel like with the Tokyo Olympics, things were replayed all the time. I didn't know what was actually happening. And then the closing ceremonies fucking sucked because usually the opening and closing ceremonies, I'm like, yeah. Like even the ones in China were like amazing and ridiculous. Okay, you said the C word. Um, and this is why I brought up the Olympics. I am going to boycott the Winter Olympics. I'm done with it. Where are they at? They're in China. And oh, yeah, yeah and I, I can't spot, I can't, I can't can't do it i'm out i am i really think that um I, the more i read well, the internment the, camps exactly I mean, if you number have, one and, and then, we only stay in the pit of despair here for a minute okay but internment you, camps mm -hmm. in china millions of people um, very sad i yep. almost can't even the afghanistan shit i can't even watch it's like okay so uh, we have internment camps we have uh i think what it amounts to a technological war uh, yep. an online war that's yep. going on there's a lot of bad things that the chinese government is doing I, for one, we do not don't want to support it. Unsubscribe. And yeah. I just don't want to, I don't, I don't so want to. So that's what you brought it up for? Yeah. Okay. So I, well, we, I read an article about it and it, obviously it's a lot more succinct than the so way I'm So we'll be able to watch it. them uh, you shoot can watch the rifles. It, but no, I, we will boycott as a family. We'll boycott as an entire community. I, I really no think go. that at this point, no desire. I'll, you know, I'm going to share it. I encourage you, if you're watching or listening, look in the show notes. Take a look at this article. It explains it a lot better than I do. But after reading the article, I said, you know what? I, I think I'm not going to lend my eyeballs or my purchasing power mm -hmm. to, to advertisement China. and revenue, blah, blah. China. China. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> I know everybody's wondering on the edge of their seats. They've been wondering for a week now. How is Katie's hyperextended thumb doing? <laughs> Live from the emergency room. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest. It's better, but it's not good. Really? I mean, just this morning, and I know you guys don't care. I'll be quick. I'll be brief. Um, just this morning, I went to get up, like, you know, and you kind of roll out of bed a little bit. And I, of course, whacked with one hand, whacked this area of my thumb on this hand. And I was like, I, like, immediately. Like, to cry for help. <laughs> I'm convinced. Who hurts themselves trying to get leggings off of their foot? It's just so tight around the ankle. 
horrible. I've never done it. I don't know. I was surprised that it happened. It's also, like, nobody first. nobody came forward switching gears because, oh, that was it. It's still not good. And I'm going to do some reading and research. Also, we need to go get a physical anyway. We need to find some doctors locally. So Ooh, I'm not looking forward to getting a physical. Well, then tighten your shit up. Get your get things in order. <laughs> um, anyway, the doctor's like, you're so clammy. Oh, I was running around. I was adjusting things. and <laughs> It's just my natural state. Now I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah. that's okay. Anyway, my thumb is still hurting okay. and I'm going to figure it out because I'd assume it would take, I should probably just call my cousin too, because that's like her specialty, but it shouldn't hurt still. Yes, it should. That's, if you hyperextended your thumb, you've got at least a six oh, month recovery. I know what I was going to say. Six months, way too long. Not, not acceptable. Unsubscribe. But somebody sent me a wonderful gift. No, wait, don't go yet. We still have more to tell you. <laughs> somebody gave me a wonderful gift basket. And that no one's come forward, Sean. But whoever sent me those wonderful things from Target, I put it on Instagram and I said, please leave a comment if you were the one. This is amazing. I had my t my chai tea last night, the yes. vanilla caramel chai. And? And I had some caramellos. And I just washed up those new socks. It's amazing. 10 out of 10. Very good. How'd they know that you like Ovaltine so much? Maybe maybe they watch this. That's why I'm putting it out there. I don't. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't think we've mentioned Ovaltine on here before. But I boy, oh boy, what a flavor from my childhood. My that, dad used to love Ovaltine. Malt. What is malt? Like when it comes to chocolate. Malted chocolate? Know. It's like Whoppers. My mom used to love Whoppers. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's this funny. special flavor from the 1950s. They invented it in 1952. Mr. Malt Balls. <laughs> Malty Balls. Malty Balls. His name was Mo uh, Monty, but they were like, we'll call him Malty. And uh, he made the Malt Balls Whoppers. Mm. Yep. And then yeah, from there, what, they made Ovaltine. I don't know what malt is. Does anybody uh, know? Like what Ovaltine is crushed up. They, they just take the chocolate. Someone has to take the chocolate off the outside. So they and lick then they, them off and then they crush them up. That's disgusting. <laughs> Your method that you were describing was so much better. Yeah, you scrape it off. You don't lick it off. Why I would mean... you put it on in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was funny because I haven't had Ovaltine in years, but my dad always had it. We always had it in the kitchen. I could even tell you this is how weird brains are and memories. In our kitchen of our old house, before my mom even repainted the cabinets, this is like when I was a kid, that we had this yellow stove because the 70s were alive and well when that home was built we had this yellow stove with it's called a hood, style katie with a hood and then there were uh cabinets next to them and the cabinets to the left of the stove up top is where my dad kept his ovaltine jar and back then it was like a glass jar <laughs> cabinets to the left of me ovaltine in the shelf there it, i am boop, boop. stuck in the i don't something, know stuck something in the cabinet with, with you yeah but it was just funny because I haven't seen a jar of that in so long that I was like, wow, this is like the modern Ovaltine. Like it looks so different, the container. It was just oh, funny yeah. to me. Anyway, they, they've rebranded, which, you know, they probably should. Although I would I would argue that now you're, I'm a marketing genius. You guys know this. It's true. <laughs> people should go back to the retro version because people are so into retro. Sure. Make the font look space age, you know, maybe in the 1950s. If I just meant go back like Ovaltine should go back to what they were in when like they first launched. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the 1950s, the fonts were all space age and everything. Theirs just was not. That's why I was like, no, Ovaltine no. wasn't space age, but it yeah. was like a different font. Yeah. It was like a 1950s font, like uh, the Jetsons. The Jetsons. No. But okay. Their boy Elroy. Dun, 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 dun. You know? That was a really good sound effect. You should be like, what's what's the guy from um, Revenge of the Nerds? No, Police Academy. Oh, Police Academy. <laughs> yeah. And now the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, that it's awesome. Where Michael's bombing. Oh. And then he's like, tough crowd, Dwight, tough crowd. As he like passes it off to Dwight. And then Dwight pretends he's like a dictator and everybody loves him. Hmm. I am such a fan of Ovaltine that mm -hmm. I've tried it with everything. Mm -hmm. I would sprinkle it on vanilla ice cream. You put everything on vanilla ice cream. You're like, That's I like the to test. crush up walnuts and sprinkle it on vanilla ice cream. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I blame my grandmother. She would mm -hmm. always have vanilla ice cream. Sometimes a little. We should pick flavors, one of her recipes to do. We have her little pistachio recipe. ice cream. That was really good too. Pistachio. Yes, but Ovaltine, one time I was at my grandmother's house, mm -hmm. probably 12 years old. I was there in the summertime, you know, uh, and the Ovaltine, for some reason, I think I had gotten uh, milk in the, in the, oh, like gross, it, huh? yeah. And, and the next day it was like a little, like it, it had melted all the Ovaltine oh. crystals. 
Well, of course, it would, like turned into a lump. Yes, it was a milky hard lump, but it, it didn't go sour or anything. Oh, okay. But I, I wanted the Ovaltine still, so I ate it the next day, even though it, it like kind of hardened up, and I had to like scrape it out of the. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all done stuff like that. Yeah, it, not like the whole thing was covered in milk, but the jar got some moisture in it, mm -hmm. and um, it sucked that moisture up, and it made a lump instead of. <laughs> And I was, I was like, oh my God. Did you pick it up like a softball and just cry? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I made a, a giant whopper. I made a whopper and put it in my mouth. Mm. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds, sounds unsanitary, but, but fine. you you live to tell the tale. Yeah. That's I why I grew to a giant height of five foot 10. Mm. Yeah. I think we've told them, but if we haven't, um, a funny thing about Sean is until, so I met you, you were 30. What isn't funny about me? A lot of things aren't funny. <laughs> 34 when I met you? Yeah. So I met Sean when he was 34. And a couple years into dating, I had to teach him that you can't just cut mold off of things and eat them. That only works with cheese because mold, as I learned in biology, I think it was biology class, that the mold spore like grows into the entire yeah, whatever what? it is. And then it, then it shows its boop. So it's once fruit. you see it, it's already in everything, so you have to throw it out. And he was like, what? I just cut things off and eat it anyway. And I was like, absolutely not. It's called the cheese method. And then he would not believe me as he always does when I try to tell him like Swiffers are really good or you can't eat things that have been moldy. <laughs> I think it was your sister we'd call, but it might've been like your aunt or something. You asked them also. And when they confirmed, yes, Katie's correct. D don't eat the mold, then then you believe me. No, you don't eat the mold. You cut everything off. No, but you moldy. can't cut it off and then eat it. I've so, uh, since come to learn. I know. But uh, but you do that sometimes. We won't believe me. And then you'll ask a random member of your family. And then when they also confirm it, then you're like, oh, yes. Who needs family now that you have Google? You can fact check with Google. You don't need to call your family in Cincinnati, Ohio to find out. What's if, with the Cincinnati talk? I haven't said anything about Cincinnati. You sang the song at the beginning. Oh. We found a house in Ohio. I know we're moving. I posted it on Instagram. It's the most beautiful. It's, uh, it's like this beautiful, it has an in-ground pool. 1909 was when it's this so, house was built. Go, so gorgeous. Oh, we're re revisiting a, uh, a segment we used to do, the Zillow segment, oh, dream houses. Yeah. But now I'm on Instagram, cheap old houses. Mm. And boy, there are some amazing, there's an era when America was building with not plastic and stucco and well, it's just different styles, right? And mm. I think, like I was talking about earlier, retro's back in style. It's always and we, been in style. And we like, yeah, I know, it's like classic stuff. Classic but Americana. But I, um, it reminds me of like downtown where I grew up. There's a lot of those older homes that look like that too. And they were built in like the early 1900s. And I always just think that's just really pretty. I've always liked that. But those, I do know, buying a home that was built that long ago could come with a lot of problems. Oh, one of the like best wiring. films ever is oh, the, the Money, Money Pit. Pit. Tom Hanks and yeah. Shelley Long. If it's you so are good. in the, the if you mood, need a good giggle. More than a good giggle. If you want to shit your pants laughing. <laughs> Sounds aggressive. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? Tonight I've been I've been sad all week. On Friday, treat yourself to shitting your pants. And uh, <laughs> everybody likes to treat them. No. I got off work, went home, I made myself a. I put on my Depends and I watched The Money Pit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All of Tom Hanks' early films are. It's really funny, though. Yeah. The Money Pit is good. Yes. Um, should we move on to emails and stories? And I think we should. Is it time for it's the stories? 30 minutes in, roughly. Let me see here. How do I. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, all right, we got to change the course of this car or train or whatever no it's just it's time to to switch gears well i think when i said the shit the pants part you you were like okay okay let's move on yep we've moved on okay here you go there you okay. go <laughs> drums please summer 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 time i don't know how it starts other than that i think that's it that's the whole song except for summer madness that is mm -hmm. cool in the gang or is it earth wind no it's cool in the gang I don't know. I don't. I it, was thinking about Will Smith. Yeah, but he he sampled that right, which he mm -hmm. made a, a, as the kids call it, a banger. That song is a real hit. Summertime, it was a real hit. I still listen to it. Although it was weird when you pulled it up on YouTube the other day, I was like, "Wow, Will Smith has gotten so weird." I don't know if he's gotten weird. He's weird. Him and his wife Jada are fucking weird. I think they're caught up in in uh, 
the trappings of being a mega celebrity. Can you imagine? So he's been famous since he was a kid, right? I know, but I don't know. There's something, there's just, they're just weird. Like I've seen, okay, Drew Barrymore's arguably been famous longer. She, she's been famous since she was born. Yeah. And I, she, I know she went through like drug and alcohol issues. Yeah, and Since she was born. But what I'm saying is she's not weird. Like you see her in interviews and she's like a loving mom and like a, she seems like a lovely person. I don't know if she is, but I have yet to hear anybody talk trash or say that she was an asshole. Like Ellen we knew from years ago. We're like, yeah, Ellen's a dickwad. She and Tom Green have recently uh, been, been friendly again. She, he went on her show. Not that it matters. She doesn't but. even have a show. Yeah, shit. Drew Barrymore? No, she, Ellen. Oh, no, I'm talking about Drew Barrymore. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's they weren't they married briefly? I think they were. Back but anyway, when he did uh, Long story short is she's been married for a lo- or been famous for a long time. Right. And she's a normal person. I think so. But and, we only know how much is is given to the public. But that's right? so edited and so so if that's what we're seeing from Will and Jada, then they're fucking weirder than we can imagine. I mean That's what you put out there? I, I think that they're have you seen that interview? Listen, Will listens to the show, Katie. We can't. Okay, let's move on to Marie. Marie has an email and enough about that, but they're weird. When you pulled up that um, that old music video for Summer Summer, I was like, oh, he used to be so fun and normal and now he's just weird. Will Smith was so popular and cool when I was a kid. When he came out, this is before the show, mm-hmm. when he came out with his first album with, uh, what is it, Parents Just Don't Understand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, that was he had, when he was like doing Fresh Prince, right? No, it's before that. Oh, did that come out and then Fresh Prince happened? Yeah. Okay. So he's had many careers. But when he first Not started many off. many careers. He's just, has, he's multifaceted. It's as like a all young person. He, simultaneously. It didn't though. It came in, in phases. When we look back on history, it's compressed. But if you were there when it was happening, not that I was there, but like <laughs> his music videos came out and he had uh-huh. three uh, big hits. There was. Okay. Can, what, what's the point? Well, there's no point. <laughs> you said he was super cool and then now we're talking about like and then it was compressed and i'm like what was the point of that it doesn't matter okay let's get into the letters <laughs> are you moving on past will smith i'm never going to move on past Will smith i could always put that music on and it takes him back to a certain time and place but will smith was so cool back in the day that cousin pj mm-hmm. who is not into hip-hop at all he would he would rock out to will smith's songs he was so into well, good music is good music that's right and will smith is talented yeah. i'm not Question his like talent. Some at all. of it's not very good though. His hip hop, you know, in the later years was not. Well, I mean, a lot of people Miami are like was that. a big hit though. I didn't like. I it. I didn't like it, but yeah, no. it was a big hit. Um, but also, I have to think too when when things when I'm getting older, as we do each and every day, if toward the end of their career I don't enjoy the music anymore, I'm like either a they're not as talented as I thought they were, or they're losing some of it, or I'm just aging out of their demo. Cause that happens too. Like I used to watch certain people on YouTube and then I've just aged out of it. Like I'm just not interested anymore. Right. You're not playing mine, uh, Minecraft or Roblox anymore. <laughs> I never played any of those, but some people do. Well, also then Jenna marbles who I always thought was funny quit and like that's sad. And so I don't watch that anymore. She was so big that she aged out of YouTube altogether. She just <laughs> moved like, into another stratosphere. Peace. peace I don't know out. where she is now. I don't know. And I haven't even XM serious she something? had that serious show i haven't like searched to find her but i used to enjoy her videos She's probably taking a breather and being like oh my god the world is so so nice right? not being on the internet yeah she was so nice when i met her and julian yeah. in person they're very nice and regular was, people normal people but that my was at the maker party that was funny yeah oh well no several streamies. parties they're streamies yeah, yeah we've right. seen them quite a bit and then we saw julian at playlist a couple times yeah. but the funny thing to me was my favorite of all of hers is her ratchet salon Mm. <laughs> she's she's i liked it when she shaved her eyebrows off i felt oh yeah i felt understood <laughs> i just i i always have loved the fact that she at least through her videos never seemed to give a fuck well she just felt free to be herself mm-hmm. her comedy was a representation of her and i was on board for that i thought that was so funny it was like right and you know and, one and, of the first films i saw her or films one of the first short films like goofy videos she mm-hmm. had done that i remember was her decorating her christmas tree oh and yeah. i fucking died laughing but isn't it drunk decoration yeah or yeah, something? yeah. That her was, and max got like wasted and decorated the christmas tree i think so it was i don't know 
Mm. In hindsight, history is very compressed, so I don't know what history when that happened. History is very compressed. It was like back when we first started our channel, so it'd be like maybe 2012. Like we've been doing it for it's a long a time ago. It's what? It's a like huge. 15 years ago now. Like nine. Yeah. Anyway, but... <laughs> Sean's history is very compressed. <laughs> um. Anyway, what was I going to say about that? There was something else that I was going to say, but anyway, old old YouTube I kind of miss. Oh, I know what it was. Because you know what I'm talking about with history being compressed, like, you know, what an overhead projector is in a classroom. And like you have the old like, school ones. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the, the piece of plastic that you put on it and you, you know mark kids that now up. just have computers. <laughs> Analog versus digital. Analog wins all the time. Well, the ki kids these days will never know the pain of having to go up to the board and do the problem in math. When I was your age, no, no. I had to go up to the front of the classroom no, but the and I would use chalk and then I'd have to write I'm the puzzle. Even, I'm not even talking about chalk. I'm oh. talking about the vis a vis or whatever the little markers were that you could wipe off. Oh, They'd be no, like, I'm talking Katie, about you go up to the projector and you do the, the you know, the equation. The, and the teacher would have started the mathematical equation and then you were supposed to work it out in front of the class. When I was a kid, the okay. teachers were allowed to beat us. And it's true. One time no. I had a teacher throw a chalkboard eraser at me because I was I'm old when I was younger. Are you serious? I thought you're making a joke. No, I'm serious. Teachers were like, what? Yeah, Did yeah, you go yeah. to Catholic school. Yeah, we had <laughs> one time I got the strap and in hindsight, <laughs> I probably deserved it. This is child abuse. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was an elementary Call the school. Police. But I think the principal got in trouble. No, it wasn't me who got the strap. It was someone in my class. And the I remember strap. it was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. But it was, you know, I was at the tail end of that. Uh, but I feel like you're not that old. Teachers and principals were allowed to do that. I feel like Quebec is like behind everybody else by 10 years. And then you're a little older than me. So you're like 20 years behind me. I had a teacher in elementary school who used to smoke in class. I know. She and wore leather, leather pants. pants. So weird. French people are weird in no, Quebec. I don't think it's weird. It was, you know. Smoking in class? So when I ask you to wear leather pants and smoke cigarettes, Katie, it's not. I always say no. <laughs> I tell you to fucking talk to a therapist. No, um, I that I don't even think, and I'd have to ask my mom, but I don't even think teachers could smoke in classes when she was a kid in the States. Oh, yeah, okay. I think that's what I'm saying. I think Quebec is like this weird. Progressive place. I don't know if I'd call that progressive. Freedom, baby. Uh, you can beat and poison children at simultaneously. <laughs> No, thanks. No, thanks. We grew up hard and fast on the streets uh, in, <laughs> in Montreal. No, that was in elementary school. I remember uh, that, that, that happening. Nuts. And mm, yeah, I don't have any more to say about that. Okay. I'll just have to edit that out. I was like, mm, uh, oh, <laughs> it's okay. Um, no, I was, I guess it doesn't even fit in here anymore. I'll save it for another time. I was listening to a member of our community sent me a really cool video of this guy talking about like, trash talking and which i was kind of getting into with jenna marbles and canceling culture okay. but we'll talk about that later okay we're going to move into marie's letter hello marie hello marie why is the name marie i feel like there's like a a joke or a movie a character where they're like hello there's marie. something about marie no anyway it, mary mary it is entitled roommates and odd names in austria we have so many austrians uh, guten tag no I don't Bonjour. know. Bonjour. <laughs> Moin. <Yeah. laughs> what <is it> all? <laughs> Try them all, Katie. Go through your Rolodexes. If... <laughs> I was talking to a member of our community who lives in Zurich, and I was like, so do you speak what's called high German? And she's like, I mean, yes, but our, our language is actually just German. She's like, we don't, like, most people just speak regular German. She's like, although we do speak high German, but, you know. And I was like. So. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is. I think uh, Chris Rohner, mm -hmm. Chris is Swiss. I think maybe he speaks high German. I don't know. I get confused by. She said the it depends on where you live within. Is it a more proper format of German? I don't even understand. I don't think so. I think it's is it an older version. I think it's a. Or is I, it I watered down? I don't know. Here's what I know. When I go to Europe, what I usually speak do is none of those languages. I just go hello, <laughs> and it seems to work everywhere you go. Hello. Do you remember? I, I remember. Yeah. Sean would do this every time we'd walk in somewhere. You just throw that weird be like, nondescript accent. Hi. <laughs> Guten Tag. You don't have to say anything. You do, it's like, hello, but with an accent. <laughs> if you were from mainland China coming to the United States, I would learn just a couple of words mm -hmm. in perfect English. Why? Like, howdy. But you know what happens? Can you imagine if someone was from didn't speak English at all, but they learned how to say, howdy, y'all? 
I mean, it'd work to <laughs> walk in had. somewhere like, that's all you have to do. That's you know, all you got. And do the finger guns. Howdy, but, y'all. But the thing that's wrong with that, yes, it'd be hilarious. But because I speak some Spanish, yeah. it's honestly poquito. a poquito. Poquito Espanol. más. Necesito practicar mucho. Sí. So the fact that I speak a little bit, just enough to get myself into trouble, because if you start a conversation and you, it sounds proper, people start talking to you really quickly, where I'm just like. <laughs> you, you nail the accent for the first two words, and then it's like going fishing. You throw the lure in the water. You're like, hello. And then they start rambling whatever language it is. And you just, you go wide eyed. Well, then, like, and then you have to like moonwalk out of the then situation. You, then you have to like, then you're like, sorry, I don't speak Spanish that well or French or German or whatever. Poquito the fuck. Espanol. Uh, no, no habla. No hablo. Oh, say. No is hablo. it an O or an A on the end? If you're talking about you. Yeah. O. Hmm. If you're talking about like them or us, it to conjugate it differently. Hablar okay. is like the, the, the verb. The verb, I guess. To yeah? speak. To speak. Yeah. I have to blow my schnoz. Okay, we're gonna pause right there, ladies and gentlemen. Or I could entertain you with uh, more songs from sitcoms. Okay. Into Marie's letter. Are we ready? She's been waiting long enough, I think, since July 26th. Oh. We're getting so caught up. I'm so proud. Okay. Roommates and odd names in Austria. Hi, Sean and Katie. Hello, Marie. She says, my name is Marie. I'm 19 and I'm from Austria. I also have a roommate story I'd like to share. I'm excited. I love these. <clears throat> Let's get ready. <clears throat> me, me, me. I started college last fall and moved from Corinthia, a state in Austria, to Graz for this. Okay, so to go to college. So I was looking for a shared apartment in Graz. And I should be, I could be saying that completely wrong. Graz. Graz. Hello. <laughs> Moin. Okay. And unfortunately decided to move in with a man I didn't know at all. Mm. Marie. No, 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 no. I already am very scared about this. I didn't know that he was over 30 when I moved in. Abort mission. Abort. Pack up your things. Move out. As I hadn't met him yet, and so we were not a great fit. Needless to say. Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Do you know when you just feel it coming and you just have to wait? Oh, it passed. Okay. In the first few months, it was okay. <clears throat> As I tried to get to know, I'll start over. I'm sorry. I'm a mess. <laughs> in the first few months, it was okay. As I tried to get to know him a little bit, but we didn't have anything in common and spent little time together. But when my mental health started to get bad due to stress and loneliness, our living situation got worse. I'm mm. so sorry. We both have our own rooms, but we share a kitchen and bathroom. Okay. So due to my depression and anxiety, I hid out in my room and rarely left it as I didn't want to see my roommate. That happens a lot. And I would even, um, I'd venture to say that almost all of us have had that situation, at least for a little bit of time, where you're fully awake and in your room, but you don't want to come out because you just don't want to talk to anybody right now. We've all been there. That's why you have your room. And while you have a lock on your door, hopefully, for safety. And Maria, I hope you had a lock on your door. This guy's way older than you. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you remember the dilemma when your parents had guests over and you didn't want to meet them, but you were hungry? Mm. That's pretty much how I felt for the last few months, except with the guest being my roomie and the situation being permanent. <laughs> Anyway, I was happy when he said he was going to on holiday for two weeks in March, so I had the apartment to myself. Cool. But I wouldn't have been that pleased if I had known what had what would happen after. He came home after one month, which I found weird in the first place, as he didn't mention he was going to be away for that long. A few days after he came back, he announced that he had married. What? And had asked our landlord if his wife could move in with us. Why ask the landlord first, you may? What's Inquire. with people? I have a crazy story. What's the deal? With so my What's... mom uh, rents out a, like a separate apartment on her property. Two people, she's only rented it out. Honestly, she started renting it out because they had a member of the family who needed some space to live for a little while because she was like moving out of her parents' home, couldn't afford an apartment in home, in town. And so my mom like converted part of her house into an apartment. So anyway, my mom has been doing that. And when that uh, girl moved out, another girl moved in. Now this girl went away to boot camp for like six weeks or eight weeks or I don't even know. I don't know how long people are at boot camp. Well, when I went to boot camp, it was uh, three <laughs> weeks because I was so good at it. I was very fast. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three weeks. No, I think it was a few months anyway. She left her boyfriend. Obviously they've been dating since high school. So 
I think they've been dating for like six or seven years. Anyway, went to boot camp. And when she got out due to COVID and some complications and weird shit that's not important, she couldn't come back right away. She had to like quarantine and then the paperwork had to be processed so she could be like discharged or whatever. Because long story short, she has kidney stones. And so then she couldn't serve and do what she wanted, which was very disappointing. And I'm kind of bummer for her. The list of uh, things that can prevent you from serving. Yeah, who would have thought kidney stones? Uh, flat feet, kidney stones, and Bad glasses. eyesight, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Other than that, though, you're good to go. You can serve. But if so you her, her boyfriend is can't waiting. can't run, you can't see, or, you know, it hurts when you pee. Mm-hmm. You can't serve <laughs> in the military. It says it right on the sign. When you go when to it get hurts recruit. when you pee. You can't serve with me. <laughs> That's the motto. <laughs> <laughs> it's chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> see, you're all just immediately. Um, no. So anyway while her boyfriend is waiting for her to like for the paperwork to be processed and for her to be discharged she apparently gets married to someone else i don't even mean to laugh at this man's pain but the whole situation is so ridiculous oh so sad for him when i heard the story i was like so he's so this guy moved in with her but then she went to boot camp he stayed in your mom's apartment mm-hmm. the little suite and then he gets the letter no it wasn't even a letter oh um she called her mom to tell her mom and then her mom went to tell him i believe that's like worse than a dear john letter and her mom was pissed too because she was already spoilers engaged to this other dude and her mom had already started planning the wedding this is why you don't get into long-term relationships when you're 19 or in high school i say they're like 16 yeah for for life and i know you think that I know everything. I'm the smartest. You're not. So I'm here to tell you. Place. 16-year-old Katie is a goddamn idiot. Well, Katie's been married three times already. <laughs> you know. That's okay, though. Always to you, but... Yeah, the fourth time's a charm. <laughs> Unce, ties, feet times a made it. <laughs> Once Buckwheat sings a song, it's eternally it's his. eternally his. If you guys don't know Buckwheat, you should look that up. Eddie Murphy back Eddie in the Murphy's day. Eddie Murphy's so funny. Boy, oh, boy. Um, Although I, I would assume that his material would be canceled now and because it was politically incorrect. Oh, that's what comedy is supposed to be. Yeah. If you go to to listen to a comedy show that's politically correct, that means you don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. You should just fuck Comedy right is off. The, the non-safe space, I think. Ugh, yeah. Non-safe space? Yeah. Everything's fair game in comedy. You mean it's, it's not... a safe space then? It's like you just I do whatever. I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> I don't understand. You put your left foot in, you take your right foot out. And then you fall down because yeah. you've... <laughs> Because you're not a very good dancer. <laughs> you're doing the split. Hold me um, closer, Tony Danza. Uh, okay, mister. Just rolling through your greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she wasn't even gone six months. Yeah. And somehow met and married another person while simultaneously being engaged, knowing her family's like planning her wedding that was supposed to happen next spring or something. Yeah. Anyway, that shit's crazy. How do people get married so quickly like that? We dated for what, four or five years before we got married? Five. Five? Yeah. Slow it down. Slow it down. Okay, so this guy, I only tell that story because it was crazy. And I was like, what is wrong with people? And to get married, that I mean, sweet Jesus. I wish him all the best, but not starting off on a good foot. So she's 19, engaged <laughs> twice. This is her first marriage. I don't think she's 19. I think she's like 22. Oh, okay. 23. Oh, she's fine. She might even be a little older, but she's that's not still not good. It won't last. No. I'm not saying that we, it won't because I don't, I don't know her, but I think that she probably just needs a little bit more time out. You know, wait till you're 30. Well, you know, and it's or, okay to not get married to your high school boyfriend. Right. You can and also it's okay get married to like That's, date people. You don't have to get married to like date someone else and break up with him. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I think people hold themselves like in their own, they like build their own cages and then they're like, I don't, I can't do anything about this. And I'm like, well, you built it. So unbuild it. Also, it could have something to do with how she's raised. We're like, hey, you're in a serious relationship. Where is this going? Are you going to get married or not? I mean, I was raised in that and I was just like, fuck that shit. I do what I, I do what I want. I'm stubborn you're and I rebel. don't listen. I mean, rebel's a strong word, but I, until I met you, I was like, I don't even know if I want to get married. <laughs> well, I don't know. Boys can be dickwads. And I also just was independent. I don't, I don't, I don't need no mans. I can do it all myself. I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. I even fried bacon yesterday, as a matter of fact. Okay. 
Moving on back into Marie's. Yeah. Sorry, Marie, I took a big that was detour. Quite the tangent. But it was because he got married. Like he was gone for a month. Oh, and got that's married. right. That's right. Marie's <laughs> roommate got married. Came back. They asked the landlord. Yep. Because okay. so a few days after he came back, he announced that he had married. <laughs> good. Good. Past tense, and had asked our landlord if his wife could move in with us. I don't think I have to mention that I was completely baffled. He did ask me later if it was okay that his wife was moving in, but being conflict avoidant and shy, it's not like I could have said no. Marie, you should have said no, and then <laughs> made his wife sleep out in the hallway. That would have been. Well, she, then she still have moved in. She'd have to sleep out on the porch. Yeah, yeah, the hallway to the apartment is what I meant. Oh, I see. I and see. then you have visiting hours. Like, well, your wife can come over, but she has to be out by 10 o'clock at night. It's just so ridiculous and so rude. She moved in a few weeks after, and we had said hello, but didn't really talk much from the beginning. I tried to adjust to the new dynamic, but there was a problem. My roomie had never mentioned her name, and she didn't introduce herself to me with her name at first. <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> when you don't know someone's name. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, pal. I know. Hey, chief. And when I didn't know her name after two weeks, it got way too embarrassing to ask for. You got to wait for some mail to show up, I suppose. So I've been living with her for over three months now. <laughs> this is like a good sitcom. And I still don't know who she is. Hello. Hi, wife. Moin. Have you just Guten Tag. So I've been living with her. Okay. Needless to say, I find that situation situation embarrassing and haven't told anybody about it. I think it's great. That's a good story that you're going to be able to I think this is a wonderful that. story. I still don't spend any time with them, but I can see that the two of them are compatible as they both love to have hour-long calls while having the door wide open and they laugh a lot. That's just disrespectful. I guess I should be happy for them, but frankly, I find it mostly annoying. I would too. At least you didn't turn out to be a creep. Yeah, I that's thought what that's I where the story was going. About. I'm, I'm happy for you, Marie. He just turned out to be apparently super desperate and willing to marry anybody quickly. I mean, that sounds kind of like what happened, but I, I don't want to judge. But maybe it's like an old girlfriend he rekindled a relationship with. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll try to give him the benefit of the doubt. We usually avoid each other, so every encounter is uncomfortable and I wonder weird. if she knows your name, Marie. I wonder. Oh, I wonder if she is listening to another podcast. The, the, the roommate, we don't know what her name is, Stacy257. Mm-hmm. If she's listening to a podcast and she's writing into that podcast saying, <gasps> there is the There's craziest this situation. Girl that my husband and I moved in with. <laughs> right. He tells me she's the housekeeper, but she does not. She does not do any housekeeping. Um, that's really funny. But I, and I was trying to think of a, a clever way to like, it have to be the mail. That would be the easiest way. Get the mail because she's got to have something sent to the house, right? Mm -hmm. Because one time... <laughs> I tried. This is an embarrassing story. Or you could rummage through their underwear drawer and look for their name on the underwear. Nobody writes that, Sean. Only I still you. write. <laughs> There's no other man living in our house. <laughs> Steve, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I should do Katie. that. Write a wrong name in your underwear, Charles. <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway, one time I didn't know someone's name. I'd forgotten it, but I'd met them like many, many times. And I... Um, they were like, oh yeah, well, just, uh, I forget what they'd said. Something about like, call me, text me, whatever. And they were writing their number down or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'll just put it in my phone. And I was like, how do you spell your first name again? I forget. And it was Sarah, but luckily it had an H on it. And I was like, oh, I couldn't remember if I had an H or not. And she was like, oh, people always mess that up. And I was like, you're so smooth, Katie. And how do you spell your name again? <laughs> and they're like, Tina, T I. -N. Oh, I thought it was T I N A H. So I thought there was an H on the end of it. I, no, Tina. <laughs> I could have said like, I didn't know if you went by Christina or, I mean, I don't know. Fuck, mm. man. You're quick on your toes. Dig yourself in a hole. You gotta. <laughs> 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 I know, like in the comic. <laughs> okay. So where are we at? We usually avoid each other. So every encounter is uncomfortable and weird. Luckily, I have found a new and much nicer apartment and I'm going to share with a friend of mine and another nice girl, which means that I'm already out of here when you were reading this and have only one week left now. You That's know what awesome. though, so Marie? So who cares what her name is? I think what you should do, yeah, don't give a shit about those people, but here's, take that trick that you learned from the first apartment. So you need to find someone, get married, and then move in. <laughs> and don't introduce these, them. Yeah. <laughs> no, she likes Just it. to keep it spicy. It's a nice girl. So it should be with somebody your own age. Oh, okay. And I realized why Marie was making me laugh. Concierge Marie. When you said Marie, I was like, oh, concierge Marie. Okay. 
from the office if you don't know okay and guess what i already know their names oh perfect she's already one step ahead look at that I listened to the 73rd episode of your podcast yesterday, and even though I don't really know anybody with an odd name, I have something that I'd like to add. <clears throat> In Austria and Germany as well, the name you choose for your child has to be approved by the county clerk's office. <laughs> what the fuck? So really odd names are not as common here as in America. I do know an older guy, though, who is called Trugot or Trau Traugot, which basically means trust God. So I guess that's kind of a weird name. Yeah. I didn't I can't believe they have to approve names. That sounds some like weird. I think it's so you don't name your kid uh, Adolf or something like that. You know, they do that here in the United States. I know for a fact, like you can't name, you know, after terrible people from history, you, you can't, can't be like his name's Osama. Yeah. And you're the, like, absolutely. His not. name is Genghis Khan. He's, he's a little testy. You don't want to, yeah, don't fuck but we put him. him in horseback riding lessons. So, Immediately. you know, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. What if I want to name my child Lampshade? I Pop should. Stick. I should be able to. God damn it! It's my child. I birthed them. They're my part of me. It's probably just to avoid naming someone a really offensive name, you know, or something. But like, God damn it! Get in here, you know, or whatever your name you can is. Name him Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, Jesus is a name that people do name. You know. It's true. It a lot in the in the Latino culture. I think we call it Latino, like. A lot of South America, Mexico, things like that. Jesus is very common. Yep. My friend, and I think it's because it's a tribute name. Like you're, oh, you know, well, tribute to they're God. They're very and, ca Catholic yeah, usually. But my friend Karen Rossi, mm -hmm. who is from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. she introduced me to a whole new realm of names, which I was unaware of. Like what? And one of them was Usmael. What's that? U.S. Mail. U.S. Yeah. M-A-I-L. Yeah. The, the I've heard Usmail, but what? why would they call it U.S. Mail? I think just because it was, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think it's like a tribute to, wow, we're, we're part of the United States. Sort of oh, deal. maybe. I could Is be wrong. Is that what she said? Yeah. It's a, been a long time. So if you know anyone named Usmael, if you're from Puerto Rico, correct Let me if I'm know. wrong, but I, I believe that that's the case. So sometimes you name kids odd names, but you just wouldn't want to name them something offensive because that's going to haunt the kid for the rest of their life. Well, you know, in if you, general, making a name too strange just sets your child up for yeah, failure. Like if, if your name was dipshit. Yeah, you know, know, maybe the maybe the name suits you, but you know you don't want the kid growing into the maybe name. Maybe you are a dickwad, but we don't really want everybody calling yeah, you that. Yeah, and you can't go to school. You don't want to start life off on the wrong foot. You want to give them the best start in life. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow should have named her child Apple. Yeah, and you shouldn't <laughs> name your kid Genghis Khan. You know, fair, okay. fair. Okay, so we have the one that basically means trust God. But it's a weird name, but it's uh, really old as well. So it might be like grandfathered in. Maybe those laws didn't exist until people got real weird. During my research around this topic, I stumbled across the name. Okay, <clears throat> you guys, it's German. Bear with me. If we're playing that game. That Glockenspiel. Da that David Redacted put together. We're oh. checking a lot of those boxes. Mm -hmm. I'll make it really quick. If you are in the Discord server, the mm -hmm. link is in the description below if you aren't. But if you are in the Discord server, David, who is the Prime Minister of mm -hmm. OTDM Landia or whatever this nation is called. I think that's what it's called. He has put <laughs> together the national board game, which is Bingo. And bingo. Uh, there's bingo a bingo card mm -hmm. yeah, for the next five episodes. And so oh, uh, you can play along. Fun. And I haven't looked at it yet because I didn't want to taint our conversation oh yeah because we we can't be uh you know i don't know we don't want to like yeah taint it or mm -hmm. so i looked at it real quick and i looked away <laughs> so and you I did look <laughs> but i didn't see the categories i yeah. just saw that there was a, a bingo board or Ooh. score sheet or however bingo yeah. works mm -hmm. yeah okay fun. play along how fun i love it okay so this is all german which i'm sure this is in there me trying to i'm gonna mumble to myself like that dog okay frieden mit Gott. Alan Dorsch, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos, which translates to peace with God only through Jesus Christ. This name was not approved by the authorities. And because of names like that, I am all for the rules regarding name giving here. Basically, you can't name your child after objects or stuff like that. And the name isn't allowed to be detrimental to the child's well-being. Very reasonable. Makes I sense. agree. A surname can't be the name of a town or of a brand and fantasy or of a brand, and fantasy names in general are not allowed. This way, names like... <laughs> Ovaltina. <laughs> no, the first one she offers is Elon Musk's kid, like X, Y, Z, Z, X, Z, and, and, and Ron, uh, Emlot, Umlot. Umlot? I'm just making things up, you guys. It's actually That's not a X, bad name if your name was Umlot. X, A, E, X, 
X-A-E-A-X-I-I. The name of one of Elon Musk's kids are not a thing here. Thank God. Because how, how are you going to call roll call as a teacher? <laughs> it makes it very difficult. <laughs> and be like, Exiagzai? <laughs> Hopefully I'm that child. D-nice? <laughs> Is there a D-nice here? <laughs> it's Denise. D-nice. Okay. So thank God. I think this is good as children are probably not bullied as much for their names in Austria and Germany. True. Also, yes, the flag that was sent to you is in fact the Austrian flag. It was from Christoph. I was going to say thank you. Danke. I had to think for a second. Right? Danke schön. Danke schön. Also, um, I wanted to attach the Corinthian flag. I think I'm saying that right. And the German flag as I was born in Germany and raised both there and in Corinthia. Corinthia, oh, Germany. Cool. Beautiful. What's on the Corinthian flag? It looks like a... A bicycle. It's the three dogs that like... No, those are lions. Lions? No, I don't think they put dogs on the flag. <laughs> in, it's a chihuahua. In OTDM land, we'll have a dog oh, on yeah. our flag. Right. What kind of dog are we going to have on our flag? Uh, maybe a pit bull or a Bernese mountain dog. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bernese mountain dog for sure. Just their paws. Oh, what are their paws going to be holding? Pencils. <laughs> Is that our... Biggest it's export. A smart dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's our export. We make pencils. I know pencils are going away, but they're important. We mm. should never get rid of pencils. Okay. In our nation, pencils are important. Mm. <laughs> what happens if the computers go down? You may ask. What if the electricity is wiped out? We need to be able to write down these. Where on the walls? On the paper. Oh, we're gonna paper too. Oh yeah, put that on the flag too. <laughs> a piece of paper. Don't don't do it. Come up with something better. Okay, I originally planned to share two additional stories with you in this mail, oh, this email, but I have already written way too much. No, you didn't. This was was wonderful. Feel free to send more. So let me know if you would like to hear my stories about a tortoise in Corsica and a mysterious ball I once found in my garden. I would definitely want to hear about those. Those are good teasers. Please send them over. I think you would especially enjoy the second story, Katie, as you love to be a detective. I do. I do. The mysterious ball in the garden. Best wishes from Graz, Marie. P.S. I just noticed that you could have made a drinking game out of this mail. Just drink a shot every time I say name. And you'll be drunk before you know it. <laughs> we don't endorse that in this show. That's not. Marie, I think that's hilarious. I was with you the whole way until. We, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> that's. Remember we joked about the drinking game of uh, for Criminal Minds, where if you dr- took a drink every time they said unsub, you'd be like wasted by five minutes in. I don't know why they don't get called out on that show for that. Maybe they do. Every 10th word is unsub. Unsub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why don't they every once in a while switch it up and say something? What does it mean, unsub? I think it's like the unidentified subject. Oh. I think, but I don't know. Suspect. Suspect? No, no. that's that would no. be unsus. <laughs> we'll start our own. We'll just say unsus a yeah. lot. <laughs> okay. It's very sus, super, as the kids super say. Super sus. I know the kids do say that. Some of the things the kids... The kids say the darndest things these days. Some of the things they I say, like it. I find very funny. Yeah. Other fu- things, I'm like, you sound stupid, and that will fade. But we all do those things, so I don't judge. Hmm. But TikTok, I, it keeps me keeps me somewhat cool, or at least aware of the trends. But I don't participate, so I'm therefore not trendy anymore. That's one of the privileges of of getting older. Is you don't have to you don't have to be trendy. You and can I just don't really do care. whatever you want. And then you come to find out the people who are doing whatever they want when they were younger are actually the, the cool ones. The Yeah, they are the cool ones. It's true. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, I could care less. Okay. Well, thank you, Marie. It was a pleasure that hearing from you. That was wonderful. Corsican Marie. Graz. Her name is Graz? No. It's no, Marie. she's from Graz. From Graz. She moved to Graz. In from Corsica. Corsica. Or no, she moved from Corsica. different states. Okay. She moved from one state. Born in Germany. Lived in Toronto. In Austria. Austria, okay, which is next to New Zealand. Corsica, which is an island in the Mediterranean near Italy. <laughs> Sean has no idea what he's talking about. This person's very sus. Sean's moving on to Ashley's email. Okay. Hi, Ashley. Okay. It's entitled, Poor Kid, Terrible Name. These are oh. getting so good. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Katie and Sean, regarding people naming their kids terrible bully bait things. That's a good way to call bully it. Bully bait. Oh. You're bully baiting them. Yeah. There's one I'll never forget. Actually, two, but only one that I heard firsthand. 
I went to a baseball game a few years back, and before the game started, they had a kids take the field segment. And that's when the announcer said, and on third base, teddy bear. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? You got to take that kid's parents' rights away. Yeah, right? As if life isn't hard enough, this kid has a roll up to school every day named Teddy Bear. I wanted to smack the parents. <laughs> I mean, it's I cool if, you're, if your name was shortened to Teddy. That's cool. Like Theodore, Teddy, you know, that's cool. But Teddy Bear. Yeah. Like if your last name is Bear, I think the last thing you name your child is Teddy. Like, ah, ha, ha, so original. Shut the fuck up. You shouldn't have children. What's wrong with you? You don't agree? I'm going to pass. <laughs> Okay, the second name came via a friend of the family who is a substitute teacher, and it made me so sad. This kid's name was Shithead. No. Pronounced Shatid. I'm not sure how that one's legal. So it's... it's was it really spelt that way? Yeah, but it's pronounced Shatid. Maybe in a different uh, culture, yeah, Shatid. <laughs> My name is Shatid. I'm from... <laughs> Where are you from exactly? Uh, a little down, somewhere down, like about 30 miles from here. Shtail, this is how they say it. Um, that reminds me of, what's it called? The Where the guy gets, he he's part of the mob in New York. And then he, he, become, he gets like a new identity and is moved to f not, uh, what's it called? Not for Lefto. I keep thinking that, but it's not that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the mobster. Yeah. Mm. He goes into Lillehammer. Lillehammer. I was like, he goes into like witness protection. I'm almost as fast as Google. Did you see that? I did. I returned one query. Uh, <laughs> I popped out the information. Um, but remember his wife or girlfriend at the time is having those twins yeah. and she wants to name them like Osfart or something. No, that's no. Not what she, but it's something. Something bad. And he's like, in my language, that's not. Mm -mm. So maybe that's what this is. It's like, yeah, maybe they're, they're from I hope they don't speak English. And they named their kids shithead because that's just not right. No. Yeah. She's like, I'm still not sure how that one's legal. Me neither. I feel like I should end on something more positive. So I want to congratulate you again on Traumatized, my book, my new book that's out being completed and coming out soon. That is so exciting. I'll be ordering as soon as I figure out if I'm going with the regular book or the audio version. Mm. I'm sure poor little teddy bear and shithead will be ordering too. Oh, speaking of which, you Cheers, record. Ashley. Oh, yeah. That's what this. Um, meow. If pony you're watching, sound. if you're watching this, um, I'm wearing a shirt that says Pony Sound because the gentleman who owns Pony Sound, this is where I recorded my audiobook. And when I was finished, he was like, I got a mug and a shirt for you and your husband. He was so nice. And it he, reminds me, their logo reminds me of Titus Welliver's TV show, Bosch. You know how the, um, the, the. Oh, like the reflection? The reflection, yeah. 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 So it's, it's Austin the Aust reflected. It's the Austin City skyline. It was very sweet. Everybody's so nice here. And it was also, you know, he works hard. When you do an audiobook, you're working really hard and they're so appreciative that you are working hard because I guess some people don't and are like total dickheads about it. But they're also working hard because he's the one in the booth. Like as I pause or go <clears throat> and come back to say something again, he has to make the marks so that the editor can take it and like turn it into a proper audiobook. So pony sound. Okay. We have, oh, okay. We have uh, some information, from, information from Ben. Oh, okay. Hey, Our Ben. Our technological what's up? liaison. What is up, Ben? Ben says, fun English tongue twister. Yes, sir. I'm already scared. I got a slippy, slappy, sloppy. I got to get my. Get warmed up. Dear Katie and Sean, on episode 73, you worked through some fun Finnish tongue twisters. I thought I would share my favorite one. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. Basically, it plays... Did I say it wrong or something? No. Basically, it plays on three English words. Buffalo, the city of New York. Buffalo, the animal. And buffalo, meaning to intimidate. Buffalo is to intimidate. Well, they are intimidating. One time, I saw a buffalo, and I was very intimidated. When would you say a buffalo? traveling across the plains <laughs> I was like, when were you in wyoming <laughs> you know that one time i drove across the country oh my god that reminds me i saw me. them and they're very intimidating well they're, they're huge animals they're huge and there's there's buffalo and there's bison mm -hmm. i think they're two different well he, he okay yeah there's something in here about that oh basically it plays on three english words i told you that 
An easier to understand version of the sentence is New York bison, that other New York bison, bully, also bully New York bison. Oh, that's the tongue twister. Uh huh. New York bison, that other New York bison, bully, also bully New York bison. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to try that. <laughs> Thanks for all you do, Ben. Thanks, right. Ben. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, so <laughs> Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo was, he was saying this is where the core of it is, but mm -hmm. the real tongue it twister, plays say it one more time. On three. Okay. New York bison, that other New York bison, bully, also bully New York bison. I'm yeah. pretty good at it. You, you're very that good. That one is easier for me. You're a pro. I'm a pro. I just did an audio book. I'm all warmed up. No, um, but the, speaking of the planes and driving across, yeah. our friends, Lauren and Adam, um, want us to go out to Marfa to meet up with them at Big Bend, which is like one of the national parks, but it's so hot. And I also, I had to do my audio book because that was supposed to be last weekend. <clears throat> and so what we couldn't um but i was kind of jealous that we didn't go on this trip with them not that they invited us on the full trip they did not and i'm not mad about it but they drove through also we don't have the time so if they invited us i'd be like i love you but i'm sorry but they flew into colorado to see i think it was a friend's restaurant that was opening there so they went to like support and go and a, a group of them there were like six of them that went and then they drove from colorado through new mexico and went to I'm forgetting what it's called, but it's something wolf, like white wolf or something. It's a, uh, it's like an art installation is okay. the best way I can describe it. Where like the neon lights and you like, she showed Adam going in a, it was like a slide through a dryer. Oh, I did you see that. It's like visually very interesting. So uh, a clothes dryer, mm -hmm. you walk up to it, you open the door. And you slide through it. Cause and, it's all and lit And then up. you have to crawl into the dryer uh -huh. and then slide down to, I don't know where, she, where he went after that. I saw that clip and uh -huh. I was like, oh, that's fun. Yeah, Linnea's done it too with the oh. kids. It looks very cool. Um, it's called Wolf, so I could probably pull it up on her thing, but um, I'll do that. Anyway, but then they also went to the White Sands National Park in New Mexico. And I asked a member of our community who grew up in New Mexico and she was like, that place is awesome. You should definitely go. And anyway, I was just very jealous because I really wanted to do those things. One of the most spectacular things about living in north america is the variety oh she didn't put it in her main feed it was only her stories and oh it's, done. it's gone yeah ephemera it's ephemera yeah ephemeral i'm gonna look it up ephemeral artery ephemeral artery <laughs> it's not they're not related okay okay but anyway so i really wanted to do those things to travel and to drive around and you know blah blah yeah. okay i can't find so it. many pretty places to see but not enough time not enough, not enough time. time. Not enough time. I was looking at driving to New Orleans from here. Yeah. It's only like six hours or se like seven hours. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I looked it up depending on traffic. Sean's never been to New Orleans. I have not. I'm looking forward to it. When I was a kid, my grandparents used to go quite a bit. I Didn't they have a friend there? No. Well, yes. But how close friend. There was a jazz musician they really that my grandfather really liked. Yes, yes, that's what it was. Pete Fontaine or Fontaine? Pete Fontaine. 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 I assume because he's from New Orleans. Yeah. You got to start talking like you're from Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not even talking uh, like I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> Moin. <laughs> Walk into Louisiana. Hello. Hello. <laughs> But no, Pete Fontaine had a mm -hmm. jazz club. He was a jazz recording artist and mm -hmm. he also had a club. I think that's what jazz musicians do, maybe. I don't know. Anyways. I don't know. There's some really cool small clubs there yeah. where it only seats. Like this one I went to was like a curved, it's just a slip out of like a bottom of a hotel. Yeah. And there were only like, let's say 12 or 15 seats at the bar and that was it. Oh. And it was so cool. And they were like in the corner, the way that was set up was like, I don't know, kind of like a C with like a big, uh, like, I don't know, kind of bowl part at the end where the musicians were and the music, the way it reverberated in that place was fucking beautiful. We'll have to go. I'll have to find out where that was because uh, the guy I used to work with, Jack, was the one that told us where to go and what to do. And we were just like, okay, Joanne and I just went along. So I have no idea. Okay. But it was amazing. Okay. Um, Moving on. Yeah, sure. And thanks, Ben. I hope I made you proud with my tongue twisting abilities ben um, just a quick question i'm gonna throw it back to you here i'm curious about what your thoughts are with spacex and the uh the starship and all this fun stuff and um, i don't know anything about any of that really why would i know anything about any of that elon has set up a a spaceport here in texas oh is that what he was walking uh, around the other day yeah oh. there was a three-part series if you're interested in knowing what's going on we're living in a fantastic time by the way if 
if there were major technological advancements or developments or but it was being broadcast in real time mm -hmm. even 20 years ago but let's say 100 years ago like imagine ford touring the ford plant you know and, and then the people get it right away as opposed to like news clips or whatnot elon musk just did like a one hour tour of his spaceport it was so cool to see like the manufacturing process and in real time they were troubleshooting um some of the engineering problems that they were having or not problems but it was just like uh issues they're running into as you learn how to do something right? yeah and the filter isn't there right there's no pr rep he uh after he did the interview he tweeted out i think the next day to the the guy who had done the, the video or whatever he said hey listen sorry i was in i was running on a, just a small amount of sleep i wasn't particularly focused they didn't edit out all the you know the the rougher parts of the video much like this podcast and so but they, i kind of like that i love because it the one thing i don't and i don't this is maybe again another unpopular opinion but I don't think Elon Musk is a bad guy. I think he's a good guy. I think he just, he like obviously is on like a totally different plane than I am in the way that he thinks and the what he does. But he he always seems super nice to people. He makes time for people. Like who the fuck has hours, especially him, in their schedule to like walk around his plant with, with a, a guy from YouTube. Which, which no, you know, not oh, taking no, away from his channel. We're YouTubers too. But if this guy's running me. like five major corporations and, and yet he takes the time to, you know, he's just trying to share the information with people. I don't think there's yeah. a, an ulterior motive. I don't think there is He's either. trying to maybe share that like this is a difficult process, but mm -hmm. warts and all, they're showing you you know th this process and it's really fascinating and why would you say warts and all it's a saying oh i've never heard it before yeah, yeah like you 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 show you know the the ugly parts with the good parts yeah to say blemishes and all maybe i don't know never heard warts and all never heard blemishes and all but warts and all is a saying. i don't say any of those things i'm just saying you would just say they don't cut any of it out that's right they just leave it all <laughs> and you you sort mm -hmm. through it and i i think that that's a, a very anyways ben i was just Interesting. What do you take think? On Sean's things. very excited. I spaced out. It was way too long. That video oh, was way too long. I thought it was fantastic. Also, too. I was like, I live here too, and it's fucking hot right now. And I don't know how you're walking around. But to get that sort of insight into, I think, probably one of the more uh, interesting humans on the planet, uh, to mm -hmm. get insight into how he's thinking, and it wasn't edited. Mm -hmm. It was It was wonderful. Okay, moving on. Yeah, sure. We have one of our staff writers here. Yes. Christoph. I think they're all staff writers they at this point. They are pretty much. But Christoph... OG staff writer from Australia. Go ahead. <laughs> he sent us the Austrian flag. So I know. I don't know why a man from Australia would send us an Australian or a, a, an Austrian flag. It's kind of. He sent us a video. You know how he sounds. He's <laughs> like more... an Australian. Good eye, mate. You know. Oh my god. I apologize, Christoph, on behalf of Sean. Okay. The subject line of the email says, "Origins of coffee flags." I am unemployed, but ordered new guitars, balloons, and other thoughts. Sounds wonderful. I'm Let's excited. get into it. Let's dive into it. Hi, Katie. Hi, Sean. And dear OTDM fr friends and followers. <clears throat> One thing I accumulated enough during my life is useless knowledge. Join the club. Yeah. I'm and so I know the origins of coffee. According to a legend, approximately 1,000 years ago, some herders in Eastern Africa in a region called Kaffa, no joke, like kaffa, kaffa, like caffeinated, almost kaffa or coffee. It's very close. <clears throat> Realized that some goats were really energized because goats eat everything and found that this happened after they ate this strange fruit. Oh. So they started to cultivate it. And here also the name originates. Although the name is Arabic and stands originally for a kind of wine, real historical evidence for coffee is from the 15th century in today's Yemen. Okay. Interesting. Where they also invented the roasting and brewing. I didn't know that coffee came from Yemen. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Whenever I think of Yemen, I always think of friends when Chandler's trying to ditch what's her name that's like really loud. Janice. Janice. And he's like, I got a, jo a job in Yemen. And she's like, it's back in the day when you could walk someone to the gate at the airport. And she's like, he thinks she's going to drop him at the at the airport she's like i'll walk in with you or whatever and he's like Fuck, i'll so. walk you to the gate and so then he walks up and he's like i'll take a, a one-way ticket to yemen <laughs> and they're like that'll be fifteen hundred dollars something he's like Fuck, buys a ticket <laughs> and then he like gets on the plane and goes to yemen. <laughs> desperate to get out of the relationship he actually he, gets on the he actually does he, goes does he get to, on the plane or does he just i don't know i'd have to i'd have to look into it i don't remember he was committed to the lie he, he told. was and i think 
I think he gets on and flies away. In his defense, Janice was really terrible. Right? But he was like in love with her. But she, yeah. Uh, she he, was pretty annoying. Because then he like got back with her. And I mean, it was just on, on and off. Oh, on. oh, oh. Christoph, did you know that um, Jennifer Aniston yeah. and uh, Why Ross, are you telling Christoph? Ross Geller, are, uh, they're, they're dating in real life? No. Yeah. That's not true. Really? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Matthew Broderick? No. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, I was going to look up, does uh, Chandler fly to Yemen? Oh, my God. Just use Google. Okay, Google, does Chandler... You turned it off, didn't you? No. No. Here's the definition of Chandler, a dealer in supplies and equipment for ships and boats. <laughs> okay, Google, stop. Yes, he flew to Yemen. He went all the way. He tried getting off the plane once, but it didn't work. So he realized the only way to do it. That's what I thought he tried to get off. Like, okay. It was before about takeoff. And he's like, I have to leave. <laughs> and they're like, sorry, sir, we've closed the gate. And so he goes all the way. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Ross and Friends actor. Okay. His name is ben Affleck. David Schwimmer. Oh, yeah. Ben Affleck. Jesus Christ, Sean. I know. You're so bad at this game. Uh, okay, so I think they're dating in real life. I didn't look that up. I think they rekindled that. They, they had feelings. I don't think they ever had feelings on the on the new recording of the new version of the show. Did they just release a new se season of that? What no, happened? they had like a. Um, they had a like one show or something, uh, maybe like a movie type of thing. I don't know. A special. Yeah. I, I think didn't it was watch. special. It says Friends stars Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer dating months after admitting crush on each other report. And this is August 10th of 2021. Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer are rumored to be dating, rumored. And fans are struggling to contain their emotions. What's that? So oh, they broke up. Okay. It didn't last very long. Of course not. The Friends co-stars openly profess their secret feelings for each other for one another during Friends the reunion. So that would be what the show was. But what's weird is that they announced that and then i think like the next day she posted a photo of her ex-husband with his shirt off on instagram not that i follow gossip but clearly you do because i didn't hear anything about this uh well for some reason i think instagram wants everyone to uh i don't know if there's some sort of deal with like, both their reps denied that they were dating not that they would definitely okay. like ever say that they were all that they have is their proof quote unquote proof is that they were seen at a winery walking around. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely dating. We can go to a winery, you know. But if you've like been friends for like 40 years. I know, exactly. Like the, you, the gossip machine. Yeah. But they could You be shouldn't dating. spread rumors like that, Christoph. Sean, Jesus Christ. What's with all of your snarkiness today? <laughs> okay. Back into coffee and yeah, yeah. Yemen. Okay. Okay, um, in today's Yemen, where they also invented the roasting and brewing just as we know it today. Mm. And I'm still convinced that the Italians make the best coffee. And I even got a new espresso machine for the new kitchen and Italian coffee beans for my birthday. Well, yay. And by, that, by the way, coffee is the second most traded good in the world after oil. I believe it. We're all drug addicts. <laughs> Uh, just coffee drug. Get addicts. up in the morning. You're like, hey, uh, I'm so tired. I just need my coffee. You know. I don't really feel like I need my coffee. I like the flavor of it. But caffeine is a drug. Oh, 100. percent But I don't. If 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 we are like doing something, I don't get coffee. Like I don't have a meltdown, and I no. don't have like a crash or anything. Yeah, I never get headaches or anything by not having coffee. Well, I I don't know about you. I don't I don't think you have much more. But I only have like one or two cups a day. Yeah, so, I can't do more than that. Well, I if get I pretty jittery, I by get jittery, especially if I haven't eaten. Yeah, I can't and that drink Graham coffee. coffee? Oh yeah, Graham Remember? gave us some like express. That takes, was pretty takes intense. Takes you all the way to the moon. I'm still. Yeah. Um, but I have to. Well, I haven't been to Italy to have it from the source, Christoph. But I also have a belief that there is the best coffee in the world, and I think it's Australian. Hmm. That was the best coffee. It's creamy, no matter where we got it. It was delicious. Delicious. Although there was that one place in Melbourne that had like. The chairs on the roof that was so, so yummy. Right. And that's high praise coming from the Pacific Northwest where everyone is on coffee. We, from birth. Yeah. Coffee in the, coffee in the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I was a kid, I think I've told you guys this. My grandma, we'd go, because we have those little drive up coffee stands that we've talked about. And she would get half a shot of coffee in like, right. it's pretty much a milkshake, but it would be like a mocha frappuccino. Wait, uh, Christoph is from Vienna? Uh -huh. And I would assume Vienna is world famous for chocolate and coffee, right? 
potentially, but he says Italy's best. So. so he's that's high praise. He's just as legit, you know. That's right. And, but again, I haven't been to Italy, so now I even more want to go to Italy. Man, I miss traveling. It's mm-hmm. so depressing. Mm-hmm. I can't handle this. You just have to go to Vegas because Vegas has all this in one place. No. They got Paris, it, they got Italy. It definitely, Why go to the real no. one when you can go to a new version of it? Uh, and no. they've got machines go bing, 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 bing. You know, no. and you're walking through it. I do not enjoy Vegas. <laughs> what, what's wrong with going through a fake Eiffel Tower? A lot hearing, of people love it. No, no hate. A lot of people love Vegas and want to go every year. I just personally hate it. Yeah. The only thing that's good about Vegas. <laughs> well, our friend Kim and Ben live there that's probably and the best thing for us i don't like going to the strip i would prefer i like good food and good shows and they have that it all exists in vegas that's yeah. what i'm gonna say is the gambling aside yeah and the casinos and like having to walk seven miles to get somewhere they are kind of fun i'm You're not gonna like, lie oh you had I to park like over here casino. see but we neither, neither of us gamble which is kind of funny i think we just like the atmosphere i like to see i don't like the smoke though it's like walking through a mouse trap you know like he, you're walking through this thing that like every turn it's is going to get you, to get it's you, to get your money, you yeah, know, but I'm like, no, I'm not going to spend my money. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll spend like $5. I've never gambled never my own money ever. It. One time I gambled $20 and I did not have $20 to my name. And that was the last time I gambled. Like seriously, that's like, <laughs> gamble, it's all rel- you relative have no, to what you have. Right? I had nothing. And I gambled $20 and I was like, and you that, lost it. Can I have my $20 You're back? Like, Wait, please? This is a bad- no, like, Wait. And the pit boss grabbed me That's and he not threw true. me out on the street. Now Sean's just lying. Get out of here. I doubt it was even a pit boss because 20 bucks is not that much. <laughs> Sean's like at the nickel. <laughs> the nickel machine. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. No, but I don't like gambling at all. I never had a problem with it. I mean, uh, thank God. Does not do it for me. But I do like walking around a casino just for seeing like the, the extent that humans will go to to entertain someone else to extract money money yeah. is amazing the marketing vegas machine is, is strong yeah and apparently vegas isn't even in the biggest casino environment what is it macau yeah macau macau is sin city is is does dubai have that too or no i know dubai no is, no i don't think they allow gambling in oh because macau is like their sin city right where all the people from those cultures go macau because is, they try to pretend oh i don't do it but i'm gonna fly to macau I'm macau tell, is china tell everybody i'm going to london right but i lie but i lie <laughs> I find that stuff so funny when people, I think uh, I think that's why I think religions are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The repression and the, it's like that diet mentality. You can't have it, can't have it, can't drink, can't have sex, don't cuss, no gambling. And then what do people do? They go fucking nuts and like go to Macau. Like people lose their minds. I remember I had this Lyft driver years ago in LA. He recently immigrated from, I want to say Saudi Arabia. I might be wrong, but somewhere in the Middle East. And he was talking about this with me. I think it was when I was going like to the east side of LA. So it was a long ride. Or were you in the car with me? I forget. Anyway, we're in with a Lyft driver. It's like the east side of LA. Try driving all the way to the Middle East, you know? <laughs> no, but I'm like, maybe around. he was our driver when we were in the Bay. I can't remember. But anyway, this Lyft driver was talking to us about how ridiculous he thought it was because people come to the States from there to, to visit uh-huh. and like lose their minds. Right. Like, and he goes, it's only because we're always told from a young age that like you can't enjoy anything. Das ist verboten. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's forbidden, forbidden. And I think that forbidden is like that diet mentality where you're like, can't have fried food, can't have fried food. Guess what you fucking think about all day long? Fucking fried food. Next you know, you're in the garden of eating, eating an apple, <laughs> you know, and then screwing everything up for everyone else down the line. Not screwing everything else up. Yeah. I don't believe in that at all okay let's go on back i like how they try to blame it on the woman okay um (laughs) okay moving on sorry christoph we got off on a tangent as you correctly deduct uh deduced in otdm 73 the austrian flag is a gift from me Ah. uh what would be donka i keep taking me a minute donka shame the idea behind it is that every staff writer should send a small flag from his or her home country or state until your podcast table looks like the united nations oh i like this that would be very cool we'll have to get like a stand to hold them Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where did our thing go on the floor oh i it was over there because she's right here yeah i see her she's holding her flag okay um, I got the idea from the map of staff writers on the Discord server, which I visit way too rarely. So, fellow staff writers, go ahead, flood Katie's mailbox with your flags, and make Jeff Bezos happy by ordering them all on Amazon. 
<laughs> right? So he can stay longer in space next time. Just shoot him off in his giant dick yeah. to the to the skies. <laughs> As I am writing this, I started my unemployment. I know we knew this was coming. But at least I got my severance payment from the old company. That's awesome. Now I am at least debt free and already ordered two new guitars. Sweet. <laughs> and cannot wait until they arrive. That's awesome. And congratulations for that. You know, I'm glad you have that kind of package so that you are able to to buy the guitars you've been wanting to pay off debt. Nothing feels better than being debt free. We were debt free for a little period of time before we bought the house. Hmm. We were like, huh, you know. And, the ah! <laughs> okay. The banker said, not so fast. Yeah. Get you. Gotcha. He tethered my leg yeah, to it. So in the next letter, I will hopefully hopefully be able to add some photos of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. so you haven't taken possession of the guitars yet. He just ordered them. They'll arrive soon. What a tease. <laughs> and I'm pretty confident that I won't be unemployed for a long time as I do have job interviews scheduled in August, especially one where I think the job description fits perfectly for me. That's awesome. Cool guy wanted. I, I will keep you posted on this as well. Hopefully we have another email because this was sent July 31st. Yep. Okay. Cool. That's awesome, dude. About the balloons. Oh, that was, I was like, balloons. It was in the subject line. Yes, remember? yes, yes, and yes. Balloons. I am not a physician and math is not my strong point, but people have successfully tried to fly with a bunch of balloons. Remember we were talking about like how much would it take for you to like, ah. um, but as far as I remember, the landing was not that pleasant. I would assume not. Maybe put yourself in one of those big inflatable ball things. Did, have I told you the story about going up in a hot air balloon? No. I went up in a hot air balloon. <laughs> Period. End but, of story. <laughs> but it was fun. You know, you beautiful. You go up early in the I'll morning. Kill her. And, Who was it? I mur do murder. No guy no. goes in a hot air balloon on their own. It's awesome. Like there's there's a giant flamethrower. Like this is a pretty well, that's intense. How hot, that hints the hot air. Yeah. But until you. Ex <gasps> yeah. <gasps> you know, they and pull it. And then, the, yeah. And then the thing goes up and. They have them in New Mexico over my brother and uh, sister-in-law when they lived in New Mexico for a period of time. Went to that. They have like a big hot air balloon parade, not a parade, but like so we, a festival. Oh, oh yeah. It's yeah, that, that's what it was like in Southern California. There'd be like 40 of them going up at the same yeah. time. What they don't tell you about is how they land. You always hear about, oh, how beautiful and peaceful and you're floating along. The sheer terror of how they land. Well, so it's got to be rough because your basket you just hit. There's nothing below your basket, right? Or yeah, do you have little bumpers? So they, at the top of the balloon, there's a, a hole they open. Mm -hmm. Um a little butthole. Oh, at the very and top the hot to let air the air escapes. out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they, it's like an iris, right? So it, they, uh -huh. they can open, open it larger. It. Yes, and that's how they lower the, the balloon. Right? So they probably they try to do it as slowly as possible, but it's still, you're coming in hot. You're coming in hot. Or you're coming in cold. But what, what you're watching, <laughs> exactly. But what you're watching is other balloons, you know, some that are higher than you. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But as you're coming in for your landing, you're not just coming directly down. You're kind of like drifting angle, the breeze, yeah. you know, and you're looking down, you're seeing another balloon and you're like, wow, look at it. It's going to land, you know, how cool. But then you hear people screaming in terror ah! because <laughs> these things, when they hit the ground, sometimes they don't hit like smoothly, like the, the, the basket drag, it, it hits and they, you know, to make it cost effective, they have to charge a bunch of people money to get in the basket to go up to pay for the fuel. So there's maybe like nine people in this basket. And when it hits, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes it's a smooth landing. Don't at me if you're a hot air balloon <laughs> captain or whatever. Engineer. <laughs> yeah. But the one that landed before us, now picture there's like 40 of us in the air and mm -hmm. various heights. Two of them went in real hot with their landing and it was a disaster. Well, and did I anybody like, get injured? I don't know. Do I didn't they, check. Do you have to I was, strap in or you I was just too worried about my, You're just loosey goosey. Okay. Then it must not be that dangerous. Yeah, I don't think it's that dangerous. But I the, think you're exaggerating and being overly dramatic. Well, they landed, but not very good. And then it bounced. And the guy, I think he pulled the string, tightened up the little Oh, so they iris, like took up a little and bit? And they took up a little bit because he, he came in too fast. He was like, I think he was getting his learner's permit. Well, I mean, it's got to be, it's like anything. It's like tricky. Yeah. Coming, you're like, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, and you're. You've got all sorts of factors going well, on. Well, how much do people weigh? How many people can be in the basket? Are they shifting around? Does that yeah. shift the way? I mean, there's a lot. I've I've always wanted to do the hot air balloon thing, but it's Let's never it. been that much of a priority that I've like, I gotta do this, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we could totally do it. I'm sure they have it here in the big skies of Texas. You just have to make sure there's no thunderstorms coming. 
because I didn't even think about that. That's an added layer of yeah, maybe uh, we go back to California to do it or something mm-hmm. where there's no lightning, right? Because <laughs> days will be perfectly beautiful here, and then all of a sudden it'll be like grumble, grumble, and you're like, "Fuck, get out!" I'd rather you drop me hot than you're leave not me wearing in the a sky. belt buckle, are you? <laughs> no, I, know. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> And they were never heard from you again. You didn't read the waiver. You're not supposed to wear any metal. No metal. Okay. Don't eat metal. Okay. About the balloons. So anyways, as far as he remembers, landing was not that pleasant. Okay. About the number of balloons. I think this depends on their size. Mm. Think of Felix Baumgartner. Oh, yes. Um, he had uh, he had only one that lifted him up for his jump. Remember? Um, That's those weather balloons. That's uh, amazing Felix pretty. Baumgartner, that was the Red Bull... Yeah, jump from the edge of, of the it. atmosphere. That was crazy. I don't even know. He had only one that lifted him up for his jump. Those weather balloons can become pretty big and qu- and carry quite some weight. But I'm confident my fellow staff writers will be able to come up with a good number. Okay. I agree. Okay. But yeah, that was pretty crazy. And I'm surprised. I know he had like his little air oxygen, you know, but they always talk about how pilots and stuff can get. It's not a fi- It's like when you you don't have enough air for a while you get uh if there's a there's a word for it but it's very common when you do hypoxia yes no. that's it something like that hypoxia yeah 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 i think you're correct okay google what does hypoxia mean here's the definition of hypoxia deficiency in the amount of oxygen reaching the tissues much, 10 out of 10 much like christoph i have accumulated a lot of useless knowledge but sometimes it comes in handy you it know? does like right then okay i was I, worried that i got that wrong that word wrong no because i i just watched ncis where they thought a pilot had it and so i knew it was fresh in my mind when you said it i was like that's the word that they used Hmm. ncis coming in hot okay and finally i promised some speak pipes and i must admit i haven't sent them yet but i will you will get to hear my new guitars with the riff i have for grind my gear oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i cannot wait hope you're doing good greetings from austria christoph did you go electric did you go acoustic it's electric time will tell i'm excited did you get a modern style guitar did i think you get it does both electric and acoustic but i would i would guess it's electric <laughs> okay if someone pulls out an acoustic guitar around a campfire yeah. um you you hope that they have a good repertoire because if it's just mm-hmm. like dust in the wind you know, <laughs> I remember Sean Nichols used oh to God, pull that so trick depressing. all the time. <laughs> I'm going to play a little, not at around a campfire, but when does people Does he play would, guitar? Yeah, he does. How um, did I never know this? I've known him for he, so long. He gave it up for Lent once and never went back. That's a lie. No, he. I think he just put it down and never, he had taken it in college oh, uh, for a little really? bit. Oh, really? Wow, I never knew. He yeah. does not strike me as that type of dude. Guitar player? Yeah. Well, like, I don't mean a guitar, but like the dorky type to try to pull it out at a campfire kind no. of thing. And he would so, do it as a joke though like he, he'd, he'd gather up and like, he's like hey anyone want to hear some guitar and then he would play dust <laughs> in the wind every <laughs> so time oh we are is dust i think it was because that was on a movie or something like old school mm. doesn't the guy play that i have when? no idea baby mm. i'd have to i'd have to rewatch it yeah. I've, I've seen i think i've watched old school like completely once and then portions of it like 75 times yeah hey everybody gather around i'm gonna play uh Every rose has th- has its thorn, you know, by poison. <laughs> it's play like a really. I mean, that's not that bad of a song. It's not a bad song, but like. It's not too like. There's a lot of other songs like that forlorn, there to pick. you know. Every rose, people can still sing well, along. That's with lovely. It. Go ahead. Has its thorn. Oh. That guy. The warble. What's his name? Brett Michaels. I don't uh, know. The, the lead singer, for, and there was CC Deville and. Of ACDC. Katie. Oh, is he the guy in the school? That's the boy end of this outfit? podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is he the guy in the school? No, poison. You know, big hair. Not not ACDC. ACDC was a real band, or is a real band. I'm kidding. Poison, is, I guess by poison. definition. Poison. Bel Biv DeVoe. <laughs> I know. That's a real band. Poison was also, I guess, a real band, but um, maybe a little lesser down the. Well, they were like, what do they call them? Hairspray rock or something. Yeah, hairspray rock. That's what it's called. I don't know what it's called. But yeah, something the, like that, isn't the, it? The hair bands. Yeah, mm-hmm. hair bands. Yeah, I thought like these that, were hair bands, that, like make your hair into a pony, but hair bands also. So that guy mm-hmm. built. I think he no, he didn't build, but he he redid Shane's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was yeah. He, after music. He the got into being no a contractor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Okay, anyways, that was a tangent. Okay, Lynn has sent us a letter. It, thanks for writing, Christoph. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. I'm excited to hear about the guitars. Let's jump into Lynn's letter. Deep thoughts with Lynn. I'm just Ooh. kidding. There's no subject for this. So let your imagination run wild. She writes, I watched episode 74 where I wrote in and shared three of the strangest thoughts that my head has been able to produce in my lifetime. And I feel like a tiny explanation is in place. First of all, I assure you, I am not smoking weed. <laughs> and frankly, I've never found that to be necessary. I would never have imagined Lynn. But I do like to play with reality in my head and see how it can bend or how I can push the limits and be open-minded about the world that I'm in. I appreciate that. At least it used to be this way. I used to find inspiration this way to draw or write as a teenager. And when I was a child, it was just my way to withdraw into my own mind and set myself free from the way the world was. That can be nice to like withdraw away from chaos and be like, I am in my own space. That's what meditation I think really is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Play with reality might not be the right word, more like wonder and try to imagine how the world would have felt if um, like if it was completely different. Mm -hmm. I can't explain why or how, but I was able to imagine that I was seeing the world for the very first time. Do you ever have those revelations in your brain where all of a sudden you're like, I don't know, shocked by a, like a wave of realization or thought? Yeah, all the time. Like I, I remember, I only have one that I remember, like I recall that feeling so yeah. intensely. I had to be like, I don't know, 12, 11, like pretty young. And I was like, doing my thinking at night where I would go before I go to sleep, I'd do my thinking. And I was, all of a sudden it hit me how young I was, mm -hmm. like in relation to how much life I still had left to live, which mm -hmm. I know sounds really weird for like a, t welcome to being Katie, this is just how I was. And I was like, oh my God, I have so much life to live. Like, I don't need to be this grown up yet. Boom. Deep thoughts. Was it Katie? <clears throat> While I was looking at my precious moments things on my wall I had these two precious moments framed things as a kid and then these little plastic balloons anybody else have funny decorations like that as a kid <laughs> but they were like right across from my bed next to my closet and I would just like look at them and think do my thinking did you ever do your thinking as a kid I still do my thinking mm. I do my own thinking any revelations anything like that no hmm yeah I remember so you thinking said all the time as if Oh, you know? one of my earliest deepest deepest thoughts. Deepest thoughteth. My deepest thoughteth. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, I remember being like maybe five or six, playing in the dirt. Okay. It was actually sand. It was like little yeah, sandy, like sandy dirt. dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember thinking that the sand was probably like what the universe was. Oh wow! That there was that is a deepest thoughteth. Yep that that all the grains were like. You know, yeah. what if we're on a, like on how a small we are. Yeah. I remember thinking, what if we we're on a grain, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's well, all these other the grains earth, yeah. and I would assume that out in space, and this is before they discovered all the other planets within the last 10 years, mm -hmm. not the ones in our solar system. They've known about those for a little while, but well, we learned about them in school, but, yeah. uh, ones that are outside of our solar system. Mm -hmm. We, we believed that they were there, but we found out recently that they're well, travel like actual proof was hard to, to fathom or to well, come yeah, by. The telescope power, mm -hmm. resolving power of telescopes was so horrible. And now, yeah. I think within the last 15 years, I think it was 15 years ago, they discovered, the, or not discovered, but they, they proved that were, there were other planets outside of the solar system. Yeah, and other galaxies and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, well, they, they knew about the galaxies, but they didn't know about the planets. They knew about the stars, mm. but we didn't have the, the power to see. And now- we don't have the power. But now we do. And I think they've cataloged, uh, I think there's 1,500 to 2,500 planets. I don't know. That's this crazy. is a Ben question. But yeah, that's what we have to ask Ben. <laughs> He's like, our, you are an our idiot, space buddy. Correspondent. Goes, um, no, but it is interesting. I don't know why as children, I believe, and this is like hypothesis or hypotheses with Katie. I hypothesize that when we're kids, we're less snuffed out by society. So we're more free thinking at that point. Sure. Where we're, I feel like we pick up different vibrations than adults do because we're like open to them. I feel like as we get older, we're like. <laughs> well, you start to learn all the rules, and that yeah. that uh, it's like putting fences. You know, it stops you from going mm -hmm. a little further. But if you yeah. take down that fence, yeah. and you go a little further. What will we find? And I think that's why people use drugs to take down fences. I think. I mean, I 
some yes and others no i think a lot of people do it to numb out because to they fall can't. asleep next to the fence no because they can't handle their life yeah yeah okay. no you're right you're right i think the majority of people but no, i meant like caffeine camp. you use caffeine to get over the fence you know you, you drink a lot of caffeine then you jump over the fence and you keep think, running i don't think that's it <laughs> i don't think that's how how this my makes brain no sense works. This no. I don't know. <laughs> okay we're free thinking we're just thinking out you're loud it's thinking. probably all wrong but you know you have to you have to let your brain exercise yep okay we ready back into lynn's deep thinking lynn you got us already deep thinking okay so remember she said i want like i imagine how the world would have felt if it was completely different mm -hmm. i can't explain why or how but i was able to imagine that i was seeing the world for the very first time as if i had just fallen from space and everything looked unfamiliar this way of seeing things opened up a billion new things to wonder about it was like entering a door into a new and overgrown hallway with a billion more doors to explore that had never been explored before. The doors of perception. Mm -hmm. I can see that it was normally pretty unusual to be fascinated by the fact that the wall doesn't move or remember that's what she was talking about last time. That the wall doesn't move or let you pass through it if you ask nicely. But if I was in the state of mind where I could look around me and everything looked as if I'd never seen it before, I began wondering about things in another way. And I did it on purpose, just because it made the world look fascinating. And it made me able to investigate things in it that I had seen a billion times before with new curiosity and wonder why the world was exactly like that instead of another way. Like, why couldn't you pass through the walls? You know, in another universe, you could. And I still promise you, I need no drugs. <laughs> I honestly completely forgot why or how this wall thing had ever ended up crossing my mind. But this was how. I've never... I have never given much thought to the fact that other people don't do this until now. I used to spend the I used to spend time with people that could follow my mind more or less or go down their own rabbit holes and find silly things to wonder about that probably wouldn't help the world much even if we found the answers to the things we wondered about. The point is to imagine simply because it's just fascinating to imagine things and to wonder about them. Hmm. Lynn is our would this be our philosopher? I think perhaps? so. She's our, our uh, staff, our philosopher liaison. She's philosophizing. Philosophizer. She's our philosophizer. Okay. She goes on though. I tried to write something about being afraid of water, but not being afraid of the space over our heads as in the universe. I just want to correct myself because I'm not sure it came across the right way. I don't really imagine any monster like coming from the sky, but what fascinated me was that we, or I at least, can be afraid of the water and imagine being dragged under by creatures and things that certainly do, don't, um, does not exist in lakes here and feel pretty paranoid, but still the huge black space that has always been over my head has never given me even one tiny goosebump. It's true. The vastness. Yeah, but because you can't float up into space and just like because gravity holds us in place so mm -hmm. you're not going to float away into space and and die or you know but, but you, you, could. you could drown right true but so I, don't, I don't think it's in the drowning maybe but also the unknown you can't see but we can't i mean i guess you can see better in the sky maybe maybe that's it oh god i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to see something if it's about to eat me i'd yeah. rather just happen by like surprise surprise you're a snack and you know it's gone Boom. <laughs> shark Lights takes out. you Lights. or that guy who went into the whale's mouth jonah or whatever and yeah. but you know if if you saw it coming mm -hmm. that would be terrifying like yeah. oh well, the yeah. crystal clear water you've got like let's say i don't know no. 50 feet no. and the shark is still swimming at you dun, dun, dun. you're like he's getting closer ah. swim for it and you know that would okay. be scary back into the sky not even reminding myself that it's gigantic and mostly mysterious gives me goosebumps and complete uh, a completely pointless thing to think about but still something that makes me fascinated right i do concur Okay, she says, I'm not going to write letters like this one here in the future. I just felt like I wanted to explain. I'm glad you did. That kind of gives me the willies. I'm just going to jump back in that for a second. <laughs> um, it gives you goosebumps? Well, I keep seeing these things, mm -hmm. seeing things, okay. articles, okay. where scientists say, we spotted an asteroid mm -hmm. and it's going to be a near collision, but it's going to go past. Mm -hmm. No, 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 like asteroids. Oh, not, not uh, space ships. Not aliens, but you know, uh, it's not going to hit us, but it could. And well, they it think off course. around like uh, 2300 mm -hmm. AD, this one's going to come back around the sun and it's going to come back and it, it may impact the earth, you know, mm -hmm. but there are, we keep an eye out. There's a catalog of, mm -hmm. of uh, asteroids, and asteroids, space junk, things that, that could strike the earth and, and they 
But every once in a while, they discover something like really last minute. Usually it's an amateur astronomer that mm -hmm. notices something and they're like, hey, have you seen? Uh Interesting. That reminds me of when we were at Zeitgeist a couple of years ago before COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, she was so like meek and mild. And but the woman who discovered uh, what are they called? They flash, they spin. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It'll come to me. Quasars. Yes. Quasars. Pulsar. Pulsar. Pulsar Sorry. stars. Yes. Yes. Anyway, uh, the woman who discovered them, she's a British woman and she was a student at the time. And I still like, first of all, she was lovely, which just adds to my frustration. The fact that her, her professor took credit and got like a fucking pro like a what? Nobel prize, Nobel prize science. for her discovery. I was like, fuck that. I think guy. that happens a lot. Oh yeah. But in that case, what they said at zeitgeist even when interviewing her was that other people in her program other men got credit for their discoveries and she did not so it was like a specific yep. instance of her being a female that she didn't get it yeah so it wasn't the professor does that all the she time she was the first person i think to to which did she no i forget how it worked she, she took she her own the time you no know, she was uh she was manning the telescope at night you know they took their turns or whatever and she kept noticing these it would like flash and then go away flash and go away so it wasn't a standard star where you would see the light consistently and they her professor was like stop looking at this is stupid this is nothing don't worry about like essentially brushing it over and she's like no i think something's there so she spent her free time looking at them and we're like no there's patterns and there's this one and this one and i've seen them and they go at this pace and blah 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 come to find out it's a pulsar star anyway okay google who founded or who found pulsar stars on the website nationalgeographic.com, they say, When Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell discovered the first pulsar 51 years ago, she revealed a new tool for solving many mysteries of the cosmos. Dame Jocelyn Bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jocelyn Bell mm -hmm. was really interesting. At least Google has it right. They do. Yeah. Probably because so she was at Google's. Like history has been uh, corrected. Yeah. Yay! Okay. So, moving on. Lynn says, um... Yeah, she felt like she needed to explain. And in an attempt to offer you something else than explaining myself, I just wanted to share something I just found in an old journal. I'm not full of these thoughts, but I have had a few bright moments in my life and I've written them down. It's not Dalai Lama material or anything. It's just me. And tried to write down something that I usually need to remind myself of when I get tired or when I get tired of always trying to get back on my feet when falling. And what you said was just that every time life knocks you down, it's a chance to get back on your feet and learn why you keep being knocked down. And another journal entry said that fire is made to burn old things down when it's time, when it's the time for it, even when they still look beautiful and to make room for something new, just because we are always made to grow and change. I like that. It's hard to trust in it when it feels terrible, but sometimes it's better to let, um, let it do what fire does and trust that there's a reason for it and something on the other side. And it's kind of like life's way of giving you the chance to learn what you need. It's easy to forget. And I usually need to keep reminding myself that terrible events are not the end and that you have to push through them because the sun is literally underneath the horizon and just out of sight, but it's not gone. She's so poetic. And to think that English is her second language. Pretty amazing. So that's it. Until next time. Oh, next time I'll write. I'll send you something more entertaining than this. I hope your podcast goes well and that funny and good letter gives you all a good laugh or just something to think about. Deep thoughts with Lynn. I like it. Thanks, Lynn. Moving on. We got time for more? Yeah. Uh, mm, one one more. more. We've got a short one. Another one from Ben. All right. Our hey. tech slash space liaison. I'm back, baby. He's back. Oh, he already has an answer. Christoph, what? you were correct. Subject line reading. How many balloons to lift a person? <laughs> this is like I, happening in real time. It's like I, a Slack channel. I love it. Hey, Katie and Sean. Just saw episode 74 where you asked how many balloons it would take to lift a person. Each, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck, woodchuck could, could chuck, chuck wood. wood. Ben? He says, each balloon is capable of lifting about 14 grams of mass or 0.5 ounces. How large is the balloon? That yeah. means for a four kilogram baby, so a small baby, it would take about 270 balloons to lift a newborn baby and about 4,000 to lift a 110 pound kid. And maybe, just maybe, 7,000 balloons to lift an adult, roughly. So now we know. 
A house weighs about 40 tons, so closer to 3 million balloons for up to lift the house. Oh, so Pixar was full of shit. So just a few, yeah. I think Pixar only gave like 12, so. Right, but they were big balloons. <laughs> to they Chris were Osborne. big balloons, mm -hmm. in, in their defense. Okay, the balloons would stay intact for a fairly long period of time. Half of that number of balloons, 1.5 million, was released in 1986. Many of them sunk due to a cold front in the area and ended up in a nearby lake, oh, in the nearby Lake Erie. It was so damaging that the Guinness Book of World Records will no longer update such events. Yeah, I don't want to encourage people to fucking release, po like, trash into the air. There are a lot of pictures out there. Just Google Balloon Fest 86. Thanks for all you do, Ben. And then he links the Balloon Fest and also how you figure out how many balloons it will take for you to... To float away? Yeah, to float away. Hmm. Balloon Fest in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland. Crave. Cleveland, okay. Cleveland rocks. Cleveland does rock. So Drew Carey told me. He did. So we have a speak pipe from Graham. Do we want to end on a speak pipe? Yeah, absolutely. I think we should. We haven't heard from Graham in a while. So. We haven't. Our staff writer, extraordinaire. Hello, this is Graham. What's up, buddy? You're probably wondering why there hasn't been any new episode of Canadian Nights for a while. I was just wondering. Well, I'm sorry to announce this to the OTDM community, but the series has been canceled <gasps> and there will be no further episodes what? forthcoming. Oh. <gasps> I know I've let a lot of you down, but I have no choice in this matter. As a direct result of my irresponsible and unforgivable actions, Sean has fired me as a staff writer after my unqualified boasting on the podcast that 2021 will be the Habs year and thus ended up jinxing Montreal out of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I only fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> you did fool us. I'm sorry for the false pretenses. But the real truth is that the dreaded writer's block has smothered my creativity, much in the same way the wildfire smoke around where I live is currently mm. smothering my lung tissue. Mm. Tabarnush. Tabarnush. Don't worry, Katie and Sean, I wouldn't just quit on you. What, leave Mr. Fuckity Fuck Rampage to get away with his crimes against humanity? <clears throat> Not on my damn story. I promise I'll be sending along an episode as soon as possible. Until then, hope you're well, take care, be well, and remember. Like snow-crossed lovers in a frigid Montreal's Eve, love means never having to say, Bonsoir, boy. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Until next time. <laughs> Bonsoir. <laughs> uh, I miss Canadian nights. Oh, I know. He sounds like such a Canadian when I hear his voice again. I forgot. Yeah. But hey, I love it. He's, so he's such a good writer. And yeah, writer's block does happen. I hope that you're taking care of yourself. I feel I feel for people who are in yeah, the, the fires. fires right now. Oh, fuck. They, it's even in Washington. My mom said it. Like the nights, like uh, they had horrible fires. Not where they are. They're, in Oregon? But they are, they're in Western Washington. Eastern Washington was on fire as well as part of Oregon. I didn't know Eastern Washington was on fire. And so they had, I think it was like up near BC. It makes sense. I mean, BC is just raging there's mm -hmm. 300 forest fires but burning. the sunsets are like those red eerie mm -hmm. we know those too well from our la days and i believe the forest fire season runs through october yeah sometimes into november we still have two, but yeah. two months know, left to go and already the most acreage is the, the amount of acres that have burned in is california ever yeah every year it like uh, it outdoes itself oh so be careful out there check your weather app if you're in an area where there are fires and check if you scroll down in your weather app it tells you the air quality if it is dangerous usually at the top it will warn you like sensitive groups ah, you know but just be aware the particles i think it's like pp ppm ppm parts per million yeah particles per million or something. i don't know but anyway it'll tell you that and you don't really want to be out when it's over 100 150 certainly wearing a mask is yeah is key yeah not so, nothing not, to do with not COVID, for covid but, for the for the smoke yeah um and if you have like we like we had to do with our doors because like you guys know our apartment was just like a leaky sieve for things you could see light around the doors so we would close towels into them to keep the smoke out so take precautions out there peeps be careful be safe yeah let us know what's going on in your part of the world right now with uh forest fires yeah and also i am <laughs> do you have anything going on i mean it's wild in germ no not germany sorry in greece yeah, Greece, Greece has forest fire. fires. I like, know. you know, I don't know if there if there are fires in Europe right now. I don't know if Greece is still on fire. Yes, in fuego. It's still in fuego. Yes, oh, no. and it's raging. So, oh no, oh, no. Yeah. let's not end on a shitty note. I you know. Just took let's... us into the pit of despair. No, I was just 
I was riffing. You want on, them to send letters about forest fires? No, I, I just want to know what's going on in your part of the world. Oh yeah. Well, I am curious about other parts of the world because in the states, I'm sure, as everybody else is kind of feeling, the Delta variants making COVID like it's here. You thought it was gone. And I went into the pit of despair. I didn't even mention. Well, I did about a minute ago, but <laughs> but I didn't. But let us know how you're doing and what's happening, and um, just because I feel like the news here is so not news. It's like only we only hear about two things: COVID and states not doing the same things and afghanistan and that's, that's three it. things well i mean COVID and states not doing the same oh. things i call like the same yeah. but yeah th- we could say three whatever but we only hear about that so let us know how you're doing but for stories what do we want this week what do we want them to send in sean ah uh, i want to hear i think we might have already kind of touched on this but because i uh hyper extended my thumb trying to get leggings off of my foot i'd like to hear the funniest way you've injured yourself have we done this before Mm, we've done bike we injuries have. and stuff but something similar i believe crossed our paths on episode but 35. this might spur something else in someone's mind funny what, ways you hurt yourself i would like to hear about funny hairdos that you <gasps> like received when my mom half permed her hair and half not in the right. 80s not not things that you did on purpose well maybe things that you look back on and say well that was a mistake mm-hmm. so okay this is what we're looking for we're looking for stories about your hairdo things that you did on purpose and you're like ooh, that was you know in hindsight not a good idea or even accidents like oops i tried to cut my bangs which people told us about that yep and they're like or if a hairdresser took some creative liberties and you left saying oh thank you very much and then you got home and you're then like, you cried oh my god how am i going to fix this one you know? right oh yeah, yeah the worst mistake you had to get fixed mainly because i'm jealous of any hairdo and how you hurt yourself in you, a funny way you've seen my love of uh filters and snapchat mm-hmm the reason why I like it is because they always have funny hairdos. And so my latest, I think one of my profiles on social I know, media. I, had, I saw it and like I said, crazy... Sean, have you been on Snapchat again? He's like, what? what? Why? And I was like, because you changed your profile picture to some weird version of you. Yeah. I look like some weird director or something with a turtleneck and big glasses and a pile of hair. You have like a pompadour. But it yeah. also makes your face shiny and taut like like you had like somebody pull it tight. Yeah. My face isn't shiny and taut? No. It's wrinkly and no, it's just not. It just, I look weathered like it looks Clint like, Eastwood. It looks like a filter. Yeah, that's what I mean. But those are. I think we might have had stories like that before. But if you have a fun story to share, just share your story. Yeah. I'm loving all the stories, and we're getting kind of caught up. We're into August, so I feel good about that. We'll keep cruising through, and you send in your stories to otdmpod at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also send in a speak pipe. We yes. do get speak pipes, as you just heard. We do like those. Yeah, it's kind of nice to put people's voices I try not to, to talk names. over them because Sean said that the audio then is hard. I know, I, I told it's you to do that. It's hard for me and not to. Then I'm I like, went and talked over it. I know you did a bunch, and I was like, I guess a little is okay. Oh, my nose is... I got to trim my beard, man. Uh-oh. Maybe now I'll you give know myself, how I feel. Maybe I'll give myself a... You got to trim your beard? No, but when I have to kiss you, and I'm like, oh, I oh, got yeah. caught with a whisker. I think I'm going to do a funny... Ooh. <laughs> can cut it down to... I'll just get rid of my mustache and it'll just be just, just a beard, the... you know. <gasps> looks incomplete. Yeah. Or it looks like Abraham Lincoln. He didn't have a mustache, right? Oh, yeah. He just Why had did a beard. he keep a beard? That's so weird. Style, baby. That would be a hairstyle. I would count that as a hairstyle. Maybe just giant mutton chops. Yeah. Or if you have a photo to accompany your story of hair, please, please send the photos. If I can find that old photo of my mom from the 80s, they had this holiday party and I remember it so vividly because it was the time when she was like perming her hair halfway, as half perm, half not. And she was wearing this like electric blue dress, which was like, you know, so 80s. Style. It was like half lace, half, but blue lace, like not, it was like all bright blue, but it had like lace bits and poofy shoulder pads. And it, I mean, it was just... Well, she's your fa- uh, your fashion icon, your fashion inspiration, mm-hmm. because you do wear things like that. I don't know if you noticed. I wear puffy sleeves. You yes, do, yeah. I do love a puffy sleeve. Yeah. Got to have a little flair. Like the pirates of Penzance. Yeah, yeah. you know, got to have fun where you can. Nobody ever got excited about wearing a t-shirt. Blue jeans, black t-shirt. That's the way to go. Blue jeans, white t-shirt. That's also the way to go. Sean's part of the newsboys. All right, I'm out of here. Okay. Can't take these insults. (laughs) Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.